Hello everyone, welcome to what if Issei got betrayed and become the Crimson Dragon God of Arcadia Part 6. Before we start please go support Rage Raven and Dark Decade 97 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. Chapter 17. Stranded. Arcadian Space, Remnant, 2 p.m. Juniper had already taken off the spaceship as Issei watched the outside in space, this was his first time in outer space. He was awed by seeing the outer space by himself, as Juniper asked with a smile. First time seeing, space Issei. Issei looked at her and spoke, yes, this is my first time. There is a lot beyond your world speaking of which, would you not mind if I called you, Ice? It would be more convenient even for me. Issei looked at her and gave a smile, sure, why not? Anyways, you and your future squad will be having real-time missions in the space. Once you have your one-year compulsory military. Juniper spoke, as she continued, the best part is that many actually end up working in the military or go down their own paths, becoming the owner of several businesses, what is it that you want to become? To be honest Juniper, my first goal is to become someone that can serve Arcadia, my home without exception, after that I haven't given much thought into it, Juniper nodded as she spoke, I see well you have a lot to think through. Issei nodded as he asked, were you in the military too, Juniper? Indeed, I was, me, and then Willow were part of the soldier first class, and we were the strongest amongst the three, however Willow was exceptionally strong. Even surpassing both me and an in terms of power. Issei nodded as he asked, I see can you tell us more about the soldier first class? Juniper shook her head and responded, not now, but maybe at a later time, cause we are reaching the space station of Arcadia. Issei looked at one of the many space stations Arcadia has at their disposal. All around it, multiple Arcadian cruisers can be seen guarding its bases in space, with a shattered moon in the background. This this is more advanced than anything I have ever seen even on my planet even my planet space exploration programs. Issei spoke with awe as Juniper chuckled in response, she then added. Indeed, your planet is not backwater as opposed to the Four Kingdoms, since it is one of the Earths and is quite advanced but regardless, I would love to hear about it, one day when you are ready that is Juniper spoke with a genuine smile as she moved her ship towards one of the docks as they were approached by an Arcadian trooper, which were the Deep Space Vanguard, as he greeted him. The armor they are wearing is similar to that of the basic infantry armor worn by the Mobile Infantry, with the difference being the enclosed helmet, as well as the wrist guards and gloves. Greetings your highness, Sir Haidu the duo nodded with a smile, Issei had gained a famous reputation for known to be the one that developed Salium, and several of the god keys he had showcased during his time at the Academy of Technology, the only ones he did not show were the Black Abyss White Flower and Star of Eden, both were forbidden by the Empress due to the fear of the destructive power it possessed. Where is Artemis and her children? The vanguard captain responded, they are waiting for you in the command room, we need to head there, right away. Let's go then Juniper spoke seriously as the duo headed there, as Issei was looking around the advanced space station. Little does he know, there is a surprise waiting for him there. Issei and Juniper along with the deep space vanguards were present, as they saw a highly advanced panel that depicted the advanced technologies of Arcadia. As Juniper watched a mission seriously, she was distracted by someone's calling. Sister the one who called to her was Artemis as she was happy to see her here, she also wore her military outfit just like Juniper did, good to see you too, in better spirits Issei. You too, Lady Artemis. Artemis sighed in response as she spoke, how many times have I told you, call me Artemis, at least here when we are in the war Issei nodded as he spoke, alright, alright, I will. Artemis nodded, as she was joined by four other people. The first was described to be a silver-haired boy he is shown to be a pale, young man with grey eyes and grey hair, his hair had bangs that cover the right side of his face being proportionally smaller and more defined. He wore a blue zipped up top to the neck with an orange trim, covered with a gunmetal grey, double-breasted leather zippered biker jacket with his sigil across the left side of his torso. He is also wearing grey vambraces that extend up to his biceps atop black fingerless gloves. Mercury also has black pants with zipper lines along the thigh and wears an orange keychain hanging down his belt which reads M8495. This was Mercury Ark, the second child of Artemis Ark. The second person was described to be to have white hair and violet eyes. She wears a sleeveless white vest, black short skirt with gold lining, and a black sleeved cape with a red interior. Her riggings appear at her left side, and she is often seen holding a black bow with the island of her aircraft carrier bisecting the bow. This was Enterprise Ark, Mercury's older sister, the first child of Artemis Ark. The third was a beautiful young woman with long, straight silver hair and aqua colored eyes, who appears to be in her late teens. This was Roswis Ark, Mercury's and Enterprise's younger sister, and the third child of Artemis Ark. The fourth was a woman that had long white hair and piercing red eyes, which have a bluish-green box in them. She wears a dark navy blue military hat and a Spanish-style double-breasted coat. Because of this, she is called the Military Princess. This was Alter Ark, the fourth and youngest child of Artemis Ark. 
Issei greeted Mercury as he noticed him first, he then spoke, so you must be Mercury, right? It's finally nice to meet you in person John told me a lot about you. Indeed, and you must be the legendary creator of Saulium and the Red Dragon Emperor, right Issei greeted with a smile, as he noticed Enterprise and Alter approach and greet him with Ross was following suit. And you are. Mercury then introduced his sisters to him, meet my older sister Enterprise, and my youngest sister Alter Arc. Hey nice to finally get to meet you, Alter spoke with a genuine smile, as Issei nodded, you too Alter and you must be Enterprise right, isn't that the name of a carrier? Enterprise sighed in frustration, this was not the first time someone called her that as she spoke, yeah, mom wasn't thinking when she named me that, anyway, Issei, your name means honesty right? Yep it does it is good to meet you too, Issei greeted her back, as Artemis and Juniper watched with a smile of Issei getting along with even Artemis's children. Mercury then spoke, where is Roswis? Issei flinched at the name, something that was observant to Juniper, he did not act like this when he met the first three siblings, only Roswis. He froze up when she had shown up to greet him, as Juniper noted. This is the second time this has happened Artemis looked at Juniper surprised, as even she did not know why Issei had frozen up with as she asked, Juniper, what are you talking about? No, this is the second time Issei has acted like this Say, did Roswis or any of your children meet Issei before? Artemis shook her head and responded, not at all, I mean even they state that this was the first time they have met. I see first Rias, now Roswis, I have a feeling that Issei knows someone that looks and talks like them to have existed in your world something bad must have happened to them is that why you froze up? Juniper spoke with a concerned tone as Artemis wondered what happened in this world. Unaware that the truth will shock the two leaders of Arcadia completely and devastate Juniper knowing how much she asked Issei due to wanting to know more about him. Back with Issei, he was completely frozen up as Mercury snapped his fingers snapping him out of his daze, eventually with him speaking, yo Issei, you there. Why yeah, I am what were you saying? Mercury sighed as he responded, this is Roswis Ark, my younger sister. Oh right, why yeah, it's nice to meet you. Issei spoke forwarding his hand, as Roswis nodded in response, as she spoke, it is an honor to finally meet you in person, Issei. Um, yeah, the pleasure is all mine, Issei mused with a bit of nervousness, as Drake decided to step in and snap him out of it. Partner, get your act together this is not your Roswis, she is an Ark, unlike the one from our world Drake decided to get his act together, these Arcadians are not the same of his homeworld. Listen, Juniper is right about one thing, you need to confront your past, instead of running away dot dot cause running, won't solve anything and even you know it, don't you? I know Drake I know Issei spoke sadly, Issei was not sure on how he would be dealing with the situation, but Drake and Juniper were right, he had to confront his past, otherwise it will only hold him back due to them being in a literal war. However, suddenly someone spoke gathering everyone's attention snapping him out of Issei's thoughts. They all looked towards Juniper as she had spoken, all right if the introductions are done, can we begin with the meeting plans? Very well, Aunt Juniper. The one who spoke was Alter, who despite being the youngest, was the most experienced in the military field. Alter then continued, so what would you suggest we do? Our battle is against the settlement defense front that have allied themselves with the Black Arms and my former husband Nicholas. Juniper spoke the last word with disdain, she hated him for breaking apart so many of her family members, with her remembering how many of the Arcs either left her family to join the Black Arms, or they were spies, until they had to be weed out by Great Red, who had already given the list of spies to Liam, and they had began eliminating or detaining the spies one by one. She soon commanded the projector and spoke, the location is Earth 25, one of the many Earths known by Arcadian space. That is where I got the information from our spy in that earth, if we can capture Nicholas, we can find out about his other important allies. Especially Vlad, and with him out of the way, our war will finish in no time. Even if we succeed what will happen next? Like we capture Nicholas, how do we plan on getting information out from him? Issei asked a question to which Juniper spoke with a smile, I know someone from a certain skeleton king from a guild that can help me so, you need not worry about that after that, that bastard will pay for what he has done to me, my family and all of Arcadia. Juniper spoke the last part with a growl, she hated on how he had broken her family and kingdom, killing several thousands and many more just to gain power. How could he do this? Did her and many others mean nothing to her? If he hated her, why did he abandon her children that looked up to him and cared for him? But none of that mattered now, he had to pay for his crimes, otherwise she would be damned knowing what may happen, she is not going to let anyone destroy the kingdom, she, her father and several of her ancestors worked so hard to create. Issei and the others had empathetic looks on their faces. Some of the people present were radiating their draconic aura due to the anger and devastation that Nicholas had caused to them. Anyways our goal is to send a fleet of Arcadian cruisers and some Star Destroyers to deal with the threat, this will be a battle in the space, we can't underestimate Kachi will even take down his own men if he has to win a war. Juniper spoke seriously as Issei asked, um, who is the Koch? 
the ones present knew that Issei does not have much information on the settlement defense front as Alter explained. Salen Koch is an admiral in the settlement defense front or Setdef for short, Setdef is composed primarily of radical off-world insurgents who seek total control over the solar system, Issei. They see themselves as the true inheritors of the galaxy and believe their way of life to be stronger, more pure, than the other systems, especially that of Earth and Remnant. And Setdef's mind, living off-world in the harsh conditions of space, has made them more worthy of ruling the solar system, while those who reside on the other planets are weak fat cats, living off the bounty of the off-world colonies. Living in the harshness of space has given the SDF an extreme and highly distorted survivalist mindset, causing them to believe that the only way for them to survive is to defeat Earth and now, Arcadia. In other words, they believe in an extreme form of social Darwinism. Issy looked at her and nodded, as he responded, so basically they have a kind of superiority complex. I am familiar with that kind of stuff from my own world. Issei spoke with a growl remembering more of his past, which made Juniper and the others wonder what made Issei so resentful and always wanted to run away of his own past. Yep, Mercury responded as they all turned their attention to him with him continuing, the front's name is deliberately chosen for propaganda reasons, to try to give it the appearance of being a noble underdog. They value functionality over style, an attitude reflected in everything from their ships to their weapons and armor, which is modular and functional yet devoid of aesthetics, with everything designed to protect them from the harshness of space first and foremost. They are willing to kill civilians, soldiers, and anyone who gets in their way. I see and who is the one this Koch you talked about. Enterprise soon explained to Issei. Admiral Salen Koch was brought up during the early days of the settlement defense front regime, the man developed a deep disdain for ideals of freedom and democracy, which was largely a result of the SDF propaganda machine. During his time in SDF Naval College, he engaged in a rivalry with the now Vice Admiral Caleb Thies and attended a delegation to the Unsaw Naval College at Oslo, a trip which only cemented his pro-SDF ideals. Post-graduation, Koch became widely known throughout the solar system, becoming the youngest recipient of the Iron Sword, scaling Olympus Mons, advocating for the construction of the SDF's first supercarrier, and coining the front's infamous motto. Death is no disgrace. Enterprise explained to Issei as the image changed to what seemed to be a starship as Roswell spoke next. The ship you see, that is the Olympus Mons, it is the flagship of the SDF 8th Orbital Fleet, and seemingly the entire SDF Navy. Commanded by Admiral Salen Koch, it carried 10 more fighters and 2 more dropships than its unsaw counterpart. The SDF had, in essence, put their best materials and tech into one ship, incredibly evident due to its formidable status, compared to the rest of the SDF fleet. Issei was genuinely surprised by what he had witnessed, it almost seemed like a real-life space wars he had witnessed in television back at his home, or played games when dire any of his family did not witness. Now you know what is at stake here this will be your first experience in the Arcadian military, I hope you are ready to say hi to. Alter spoke with a smile making a say gulped as he spoke. I am Alter I am Alter nodded as they all decided to prepare for them. Scene change. Issei was in his combat suit, he had an extra magical layer of suit meant for handling the lack of atmospheric pressure in the space. Although he did not need it due to him handling the lack of atmospheric pressure and air in space, Artemis and her children insisted on having this with him. I hope you are ready for this. Issei turned around to see Juniper speaking with a smile, as Issei nodded, with him speaking. Why yeah I am Juniper looked at him and sensed his nervousness, and she spoke. I know, this is your first space journey, let alone your first space battle, you will be alright leave the piloting to me, can you handle the weapons in the ships? Issei looked at her and responded. I will try I am not even familiar with how a spaceship works or even how the weapon systems work. Juniper sighed in frustration, she should have had made him have a little bit of simulations, as it would have helped. However, now was not the time to get frustrated or get worked up. When using the weapons, think of it as those space battles you play in those video games like Star Wars Squadrons and House of the Dying Sun, to name a few. I believe you must have played games like those in your old world, right? Yeah, I did Juniper smiled in response as she spoke, good, now let's head inside, the United Nations Space A will be assisting us due to them being natural enemies of the SDF and allies with us, so they will be on our side. Juniper suddenly got a call from someone as she exclaimed, what? We are on our way. Juniper, what happened? Juniper looked at him and spoke with seriousness and anger in her voice. The Unsaw called us for help, the SDF and the Black Arms have already attacked Earth-25, they need out help, we need to hurry Issei nodded in agreement, as they both rushed inside, they had to head there as soon as possible. Oh and before I go, here Juniper gave a communication circle and did the same to Drake as well. Now we all can communicate while we are in the ship, keep your eyes and ears peeled to say, you are the offense and defense of my ship, alright Issei nodded in response as he spoke, as you wish Juniper gave a smile as she spoke, let's go, scene change, unknown space.
Juniper and Issei along with the Arcadian fleet, were traveling across the space heading to the Unsa battlefront, as they knew the battle has already begun. In another ship, which was where Artemis and her children were present were all in a different fleet, the fleet consisted of 10,000 cruisers each followed by five star destroyers. These were the first wave of the armies that were present, and many were to follow after. So Issei, are you ready for your first actual war battle? Issei nodded in response, yep, I am. And if you are worried about your ammo going down, you can always use your boosted gear and sink it with the ship. I made sure to put away such that you can still use your magic for this fight, Drake then chimed in. Juniper is correct you should be able to do it, remember that you can synergize your sacred gear with the ship's weapon console that way, you can use your dragon shots, and even maybe blaster cannon to assist you in the battle, Issei nodded in understanding as Juniper responded, we will be coordinating the battle, so keep your eyes peeled, Issei Juniper spoke with a grin as Issei responded, yes, the ships keep traveling for a short while, that was until they saw the entire Unsaw fleet clashing against the forces of the SDF and the Black Arms, however what was happening was the Black Arms and the SDC winning. Juniper watched in horror as the retribution was only operational alongside the Tigris. We need to head there fast, Issei exclaimed as Juniper nodded, however just as they were about to Artemis contacted Juniper and spoke, Juniper there is an incoming transmission, from the Black Arms ship Juniper was surprised as was Issei, as she spoke, Achitru Juniper spoke as a video transmission from someone she knew all too well, and despised came on the screen. She glared at him with pure hatred in her eyes. It was none other than Nicholas. Hello Junie, been a while since we have last seen each other. Juniper growled at her ex-husband. Nicholas then chuckled and responded, you look so good in that outfit of yours, been a while since I have seen you in your soldier days. Nicholas Juniper growled with anger as she glared at him, only to hear a cackle from the man she called her husband. So here to kill me, for my betrayal against you is that why you are here, tell me Juniper, is that why you are here Juniper was seething in anger, as she reeled it in, she would get a revenge when Nicholas was in his weakest, she is going to enjoy killing him once and for all. You bastard do you know how much my family has been broken because of your deception, you turned so many against me, against my family, against Arcadia what for power, you were already the emperor what else did you want? You already were on the same level as I am, and yet, you wanted total domination, why did I not see you for the power-hungry man you were? Juniper still blamed herself for Nicholas's betrayal, she was deceived for more than 20 years, and there was nothing they could do. Oh Junie still as foolish as ever. Juniper growled at the insult and glared at him, as he continued, it was so easy to manipulate you, and I came to know so much, so much secrets that would have remained hidden from me, and probably even the rest of Arcadia. You, you Juniper had tears in her eyes as she looked away, Nicholas smiled, knowing that she still blamed herself for what had happened, as he soon turned to Issei and spoke, oh I haven't forgotten about you, the legendary red dragon emperor, Issei Haidu. What do you want with me Juniper was still devastated, and Issei was helpless in comforting her, since Nicholas will only continue to mock and torment her. Her. Nicholas then spoke to Issei. I know something very interesting about you, you see, I not only have located your home, but I also know something else as well. Why did you run away? Why did you accidentally stumble in Arcadia along with your family of yours? And I also know of your miserable home life that caused you to run away. Issei was horrified by this, with Juniper also looking at him. She had a feeling that Nicholas knew something about Issei's past that she did not. She had an idea why he ran away. It was because of his bad home life, but how bad it was, that was something she was not even aware of. Issei Juniper muttered in horror, as Issei shouted in pure anger, how the hell did you know about this answer me, Nicholas? Juniper was surprised, this was the first time she had seen Issei's anger like this, as Nicholas only laughed in response and spoke, in that case, come to Vlad's ship and find out the truth, you can see where it is, I dare you to survive this battle and come out unscathed, I wish you the best of luck, cause you are going to need it. Nicholas cackled as the transmission cuts off, Issei takes a deep breath to calm himself down. Juniper was shocked and horrified, she knew Issei, but this was the first time she had seen him angry, especially to this extent. His past was always a touchy subject even for him, and Nicholas knew it, she was afraid of what he intends to do with it. She soon shakes her head and speaks. Issei let's go Juniper spoke with a serious tone, as she piloted the ships to head to Vlad's personal flagship, the Kazikli Bay, which translates to Impaler Chieftain in Turkish. Juniper soon commands her forces to charge at the ships, which comprised of the Black Arms cruisers and the SDF fleet, which comprised of the SDF carrier, SDF destroyer and Ajax, however those were the only ships Aelin Koch had brought. Captain, I am giving you command, destroy any ships that will get in our way towards the Kazikli Bay, the Arcadian space captain responds. As you wish, Empress Juniper then spoke seriously to Artemis, Arty, follow me and assist me in taking down the ships that will try and intercept us. Leave it to me, sis. Artemis responded seriously as Juniper spoke to Issei, you know what you need to do, right? Yep, I will handle the weapons. 
Juniper nodded as she started to pilot the ship as Issei handled the weapons, he saw the ships fire at the Arcadian fleet, however, with the captain outmaneuvering the ships and creating an attack formation, they were able to prevent several ships from being hit at all. However, tragically some of the ships were hit, although damages could be repaired, the captain then responded. Fire at them the ships all aimed their autocannons to fire at the ships as the pilots tried to dodge the aiming attacking weapons that were aimed at them, however some were not lucky enough and were destroyed. Seeing this opportunity Juniper piloted the ship forward, they could see that their opening, as two of the Black Arms cruisers were trying to get to them, two boogies coming for us, Issei responded with a serious tone. Leave it to me Issei aimed the cannons towards the two ships and started to fire at them, the first tried to evade the attacks, however it was soon struck and it started to collapse as it fell onto the moon's surface destroyed. Issei started to aim the cannons at the other one, as it was doing the same, he started firing at the other cruiser and started to destroy it, it soon exploded as well, got him. Juniper then spoke with a smile, you seem like a natural at this good job, Issei responded with a smile of his own, thanks Juniper. Issei soon scanned for his enemies, as five of the SDF carriers were heading towards them. Issei spoke with a grin, now gaining confidence, leave it to me. Issei kept aiming his shots at the SDF carriers as they were taking damage, but they were bulky as Issei was getting annoyed and responded, just how many shots do these bookers take? Try firing at the engines Issei, that is most of the ship's weak spots Issei nodded as he spoke, understood. Issei tried to find the engines of the SDF carriers as he smiled when he found them, aiming his cannons at the ships, he was able to prevent their advance as they started to float in the air, he kept firing even more, causing the first one to get destroyed. Juniper kept maneuvering the ship as she evaded the cannon blasts heading towards her. The years of experience she had in the military allowed her to become an ace pilot and an amazing soldier, eventually becoming one of the strongest Arcadians of all time. Issei continued to use the same strategy to aim at the ship's engines and destroy them with relative ease as he destroyed three others in that manner, Issei cheered at his success as Juniper smiled at this, usually the one that commands the ship blasters is known to be one of her men. But Issei, this was his first time, and he was doing exceptionally well, which made her wonder what exactly happened in his old world that caused him to run away like Nicholas stated. Shaking her head at those thoughts, she couldn't let them distract her. Issei continued to fire at the final carrier destroying it as well. Juniper then spoke with a serious tone, as she could see Vlad's flagship, the Kazikli Bay. We are here, Issei Issei nodded with a serious tone, as he scanned to see if there are any ships trailing them, just as they were moving even closer, another transmission came in front of them. Juniper immediately patched it through and responded looking at the face. What do you want Nicholas? Juniper spoke coldly to which Nicholas responded, me? I am here to congratulate you, you did it. You managed to get close to Vlad's ship, what did you expect? I am one of the top soldiers in my time, you should know that, considering you knew almost many things about me. Juniper responded mockingly to which Nicholas retorted. I know, I know, should have sent more ships behind you, but oh well, Nicholas spoke with a shrug as Juniper and Issei coldly glared at him, he then spoke, oh this reminds me, Koch would like to give you some words. The screen soon changed to Admiral Salen Koch from the SDF, as he spoke. Empress of Arcadia and the creator of Salium, it is not nice to meet you, at all Juniper scoffed at Koch's nature as she spoke. I figured, the feelings mutual Koch what do you want? Koch only gave a smile as he spoke. It's no worried, today you will die, and we will capture your partner, after all, death is no disgrace Juniper gritted her teeth in anger, as she spoke coldly. We will see about that Koch Juniper cuts off the transmission, as Artemis soon speaks. We are heading in, right? Juniper nodded as she spoke, indeed we are Artemis let's go. Juniper and Artemis piloted their ships towards the Kazikli Bay. They soon departed for their ships as they activated their cloaking devices, so that no one could detect them. Using their military tactics, Juniper, Artemis and Alter headed first as they motioned the others to follow them suit. Seeing the soldiers, Juniper muttered towards Issei and spoke, you know a double takedown, right? I have played games involving stuff like this, so that is not a problem. Juniper gave a knife, as the two ambushed the soldier making them struggle, they couldn't escape due to their superior strength as the two, with them quickly slicing their throats, as they soon nodded in approval, with Issei speaking. The coast is clear, Roswis used her magic to see if there is anyone behind them for an ambush, as she spoke with a sigh, no one behind us, we are clear for an attack. Juniper nodded as she commanded. Issei, use a dragon shot Issei nodded as he fired a dragon shot at the doors which caused them to explode, this alerted the soldiers on the other side, as one of them exclaimed, intruders the SDF soldiers ready their weapons, however Alter was prepared quickly firing shots at their heads, they soon dropped dead. Come on, get a move on. Roswis spoke seriously as they kept pushing forward. Roswis fired two other shots at the approaching soldiers as Issei brought out his two twin pistols and fired at two others that had come towards him, he aimed it at their heads and shot the grunts, killing them instantly. 
Mercury and Enterprise also assisted them in gunning down any grunts that had come their way, as Issei and Juniper kept pushing forward, as Issei used barrier magic to protect his squad, while bringing out his own specialized gun, the M4 AI, which was a standard assault rifle, which was given to him by Bianca for this mission. Issei kept firing at them, and due to its suppressed noise, it was barely noticeable. They kept pushing forward, as they eventually reached the room, where Vlad, Nicholas and Salen were waiting for them. Welcome, I have been expecting you Nicholas spoke with a grin, as Juniper was seething in rage, seeing the man that she loved betray her in such an extent. Issei also glared at him as he had to know how he knew about his past, and what did he do. Artemis and her children were also glaring at them, as they saw Juniper readying a very strong draconic magic, while screaming. Nicholas Juniper's was radiating her aura, which showed that she was beyond furious as she aimed it at her, as she was ready to incinerate him alive. She then spoke with a tearful rage, do you have any care for your daughter's Rosemary, do you know how much she cried when you turned your back on her? When you stabbed me in the back tell me Nicholas, did you even have a shred of remorse or care? Nicholas looked at her for a moment, he narrowed his gaze, and spoke, nothing in my eyes, reaches for power. Why should I care for love, when power was everything in my eyes? I always yearn for power, Junie, and that is my only sole motivation, even our children, I only love them for power, that is all, I want their power Junie, the power of icons in my hands, just imagine how powerful I become. When I get all the icons I will become unstoppable, Nicholas exclaimed in a maddened gaze as everyone was stunned, everyone minus Juniper was beyond angry, aside from the ones affiliated with the Black Arms or SDF. Artemis's clothing had already turned to black with anger as she shouted. You scumbag Artemis's body was radiating with aura, as Mercury desperately tried to calm his mother along with the rest of her daughters, but just as they were about to do so. They were surrounded by troops of the SDC and Black Arms, which had gas releasers. They all had worn masks such that the gas does not affect them. As for Juniper, she had tears falling down from her eyes, as her power faltered for a moment, she saw her ex-husband for the true monster he is. I I trusted you, believed that maybe, just maybe there was some good left in you but, you really are like the others in the Four Kingdoms. Juniper uses her free hand to wipe her tears before shouting, this ends now. Nicholas seemed amused, as in her anger, she failed to see Vlad secretly preparing a nail that would subdue her powers. He soon turned his attention to Issei and decided to break him as well, so Issei, I also have some news for you as well. What do you want, bastard? Issei shouted in response, as Nicholas spoke with a dark grin, so Issei, let me tell you something, do you remember the names Dai Haidu and Serzich's Lucifer? Issei almost dropped his gun, how did he know about them? When did he reach his world and know about them? If so, what is going to happen now? Greg was also horrified by this, how did Nicholas and the Black Arms of all people know about them, while the others minus Issei, Drag and the Black Arms remained confused. Artemis then muttered to her children. Who is this Dai and Serzich's, are they someone that Issei knows? Mercury responded, I have no clue mom, I think this die is related to Issei dot dot given their last names, Mercury spoke as Roswiss added. But Serzich is, just who is he to him? Everyone from Arcadia was confused, even Juniper herself looked at Issei in confusion, who had a look of horror in his face, before it changed into anger as he growled. How do you know them? Issei's tone soon increased with anger as he continued, how the buck do you know those names, answer me Nicholas how the buck do you know them? He, so you do remember them, Nicholas cackled enjoying Issei's anger and despair, as he continued, we know everything Issei, from your troubled childhood because of Dai to even your eventual runaway, you are just a coward, who runs away from his own past, you are nothing but a pathetic dragon emperor, partner, don't listen to him he is only trying to break you, Drag tried to reason with Issei who was starting to get even more despair filled, his anger was still present, as Drag angrily shouted, how can someone be this psychopathic? You don't care about your family, your own daughters, and now you want to break an innocent man, you never care for anyone but yourself, don't you Nicholas Juniper looked at Issei with a saddened look, she did not see him as a coward, she never did. She hated the man that was her former husband, whom she had trusted with all of her might, and now even Issei is going to fall into despair. You are right on that drag even she, she is just another pawn, and today is the day, she is going to breathe her last Vlad, now Nicholas looked towards Vlad, who immediately threw the nail at Juniper aimed straight at her chest, it soon activated releasing its curse, causing her to scream in pure agony. Aya Juniper screamed in pain, as the curse energy sent a say back, with all of them shouting her name with fear. Juniper's sister and Juniper all three watched in horror as they watched helplessly, moments later the cursed nail died down, as she could no longer feel her powers. She was just an ordinary human for now. She felt fear by this, she was powerless to stop Nicholas and the Black Arms. Like I said, this was a trap, I knew you would come here with your anger against me, and you just did what I expected you to do and you did me a favor, you brought even a say here with me, his abilities is something I can use for my own amusement, Juniper fell to her knees crying in helplessness. 
She once again endangered Issei's life due to her recklessness and blind anger and vengeance. Issei how about I make you a deal? I will give you revenge against those that tormented you you can destroy it, all you have to do is join us, Issei looked at him with his hair covering his face. He soon started to walk towards Nicholas, Vlad and Koch, as they had a smirk, however unbeknownst to them, Issei had brought out his pistol, which was something noticeable by Artemis and her children. The feared at first Issei would join them, but that was not the case, additionally Artemis felt the anger in his expression, but he appeared calm, and that alone made her concerned. His anger now knew no bounds. Issei Juniper muttered with worry as she could see him walk in front of Juniper and Nicholas as he spoke. Yes boy, now all you have to do is join me, Issei did not move at all. Before anyone could even do anything, suddenly Issei whips out his pistol and fires it directly at Nicholas's face, creating two holes on both of his cheeks. He made sure to aim it right between his cheeks, such that the bullet will go right through his mouth and not kill him. Nicholas fell down to the ground, holding his cheek in agony, as he spoke coldly and with utter disdain for the man in front of him. His face had anger in his eyes. The guards were also shocked by this as they were distracted. You want my answer, this is my answer Issei then looked at him in the eye and spoke coldly, you of all people should know how much I value family, Juniper and the Arcs are more of my family than my old family will ever be, and there is no way I am going to join someone who doesn't even value that. Nicholas glared at him with anger and hatred in his eyes, and he looked at the man dead in the eye as he shouted. You are a fool Hyde you chose to be nothing, nothing at all, power is the one that dictates everything, remember that boy Issei only looked at the man with complete and utter hatred as he spoke. Then you really are an idiot if you think that, well yes power and might do control a lot of things, it can't buy or gain invaluable things like family or love. You are an idiot to abandon such things and chose a civil war by gathering those that don't understand those values and are power craving morons like yourself. Juniper and the others looked at him in happiness, knowing what kind of a person Issei really is, Artemis and her children made quick work of the guards, and seeing this Koch muttered to Vlad. We need to get out of here now we will only get ourselves killed. Vlad understood this as he generated several cursed nails at both Issei and Juniper, as he noticed this and got out of there. Issei brought out the judgment of Shamash and fired at the trio, Vlad used a magic circle and gave the code for the self-destruct sequence, as Vlad responded with a magic circle and teleported out of there. Morning self-destruct sequence in T-60 seconds. We need to get out of here, Enterprise exclaimed with fear as Juniper responded, find a ship, we will all get out of here, as soon as we can. The others nodded as Juniper was struggling to even walk, Issei helped her in this state. Soon enough, one cruiser was found, as it was able to house only five people at once. Should it is only a six this can be a problem, Mercury cursed as Juniper spoke seriously. All of you head inside, Artemis take your children inside. Artemis and her children went wide-eyed, as Artemis retorted. But Juniper cuts her off and speaks, there is no time to argue, head inside now. Artemis and her children reluctantly nodded as they all went inside, Juniper looked at Issei as she spoke. You too, Issei Issei shook his head and responded. There is no way I am leaving you here, Juniper Juniper became wide-eyed as she spoke, Issei but. I promised your kids that I will bring your mother safe and sound, and there is no way I am failing that Artemis, head out of this place, we will find another ship and join you guys as soon as possible, Artemis looked at him and reluctantly nodded, as the ship doors closed, both Juniper and Issei looked around if they could find another ship, as they rushed outside Juniper spoke, Issei, leave me here, I let my vengeance get the better of me, I don't want to endanger your life, leave me and locate the ship to head back, Issei looked at her and spoke angrily, what the hell are you talking about? Issei then continued, look, John and his sisters are waiting for their mother back home, they need you, and I will get you back to them, at all costs, that is my promise to you. Issei Juniper was helpless, she muttered his name seeing how loyal he can be to his loved ones, he was no coward in her eyes, he never was, she was in tears hearing this. They rushed to what seemed to be a broken down ship. Great, curse my bad luck, Issei exclaimed with annoyance as Juniper spoke, let's see if we can run this thing. Issei nodded as he helped her up, he helped her to the console as she started to power it, she then spoke. It's working, I can run this thing before we can get help, Issei nodded as he looked at the weapon section, so that she can pilot this thing. Let's get the hell out of here Juniper spoke with a smile as Issei nodded, she may be depored for now, but it won't last for long. The ship also took off in a different direction. As they soon joined Artemis and her ship as well, which was piloted by Enterprise. This was noticed by them who were overjoyed that they could make it out alive. They immediately communicated to her. You did it, Sister Juniper nodded with a smile as she spoke, you can thank Issei, it is because of him we were able to escape unscathed. Yeah I guess Artemis responded with a smile of her own, as they piloted back to Arcadia. However, just as they were escaping, Nicholas and the Black Arms watched this scene, they were furious that Issei foiled their plans, as Koch spoke. Fire at the ships, show no mercy Koch commanded the Olympus Mons to fire 50 rapid-fire high-velocity ballistics at the two ships. 
the ballistics were fired at the two ships as the pilots desperately tried to avoid the attacks, and they took damage against the attacks, Juniper's ship taking even more damage, Mercury then exclaimed, I don't think we can continue this we need to escape out of there ASAP Mercury tried to use all powers into hyperdrive, Artemis communicated with Juniper. Juniper, is your hyperdrive working? Juniper responded with a shaky voice, no it is not but we will find a way out of here. But, Juniper we can't leave you here. Artemis exclaimed as Juniper shouted, I will come back Artemis protect your kids and head back home safely, we will find a way back that is an order from the Empress. Artemis flinched at this as she spoke, don't worry we will do so Mercury, prepare the hyperdrive. As you wish, mother the hyperdrive was being prepared as they could only hope that Issei and Juniper make it out alive. Back with Juniper and Issei, they desperately tried to escape the assault that the Olympus Mons was unleashing at them. Juniper then exclaimed with frustration. Damn it even the stabilizers are damaged, Issei gritted his teeth in helplessness as he remembered a power he did not wish to use, cause the last time he did, he was hospitalized. Juniper, I have a way to get out we need to escape this ship Juniper looked at him as if he was crazy as she responded, are you crazy? Space has no air, we will lose our breath and die. We are going to die anyway, soon enough the ship is going to explode listen, I know of a way out of here, Juniper looked at him and wondered what he is talking about. Do you trust me, Juniper? Juniper looked at him and spoke, I do. Okay listen, I have a stronger form than Balance Breaker Beyond that will allow me to survive in the cold of space. My body can't survive in the emptiness of space, but you got to hold your breath, until then Juniper looked at him, as they had no choice, she then spoke seriously. Alright Issei, do what you have to do I trust you on this one Issei nodded in response, as he looked at his boosted gear and started to begin the chant. Even Drake agreed to this, as they started to chant. The crimson red dragon dwelling within me, awaken from your dominance Issei started to chant. The crimson heavenly dragon I possess within me, rise up to become a king, and Roar Drake also made his chant as Issei continued. The jet black god of infinity and the glorious god of dreams Issei continued this chant as they both continued, with Issei starting to open the shaft and Juniper taking and holding her breath, she soon rushed towards Issei. Watch over the false forbidden existence we shall become that transcends the boundaries. Thou shall dance within our radiant inferno. Diabolo's dragon god. Issei and Juniper both jumped out as Issei entered into his Diabolo's dragon state. It was a much more advanced looking variant of the original balance breaker and even balance breaker beyond. Issei immediately grabbed Juniper in a defensive manner and flew off in a different direction as the ship exploded. The Black Arms and the SDF celebrated their victory, while the ones in the other shuttle watched in shock and horror as Enterprise muttered. No and Juniper. Artemis fell to her knees as she shouted, Nu Nu oh the other children also looked down sadly presuming that both Juniper and Issei perished in the explosion, not knowing that they long escaped. The hyperdrive soon triggered getting the ship far away to a safe location. Scene change. Issei flew off in rapid speeds holding Juniper closer to her so that his heat can allow her to survive as he sensed an uninhabited yet atmospheric planet. He immediately dashed there as he curled up into a ball to protect a powerless Juniper from the atmospheric heat. They were literally like a meteor as they soon crashed to the ground. Issei lost his armor as he spoke, ugh that was so damn reckless. He soon looked at Juniper who was on his chest as he spoke, you okay? Yeah, I am seems like your plan worked but where the hell are we? Juniper looked around unable to recognize the place as Issei spoke, I guess we are in an unknown planet the good thing is that we survived, but making it out of here is something we need to do. Juniper nodded as she soon woke up and helped Issei up, she was truly grateful to Issei for risking his own life to save her multiple times. However, they had to prioritize getting out of here and heading back. The Arcadians presume they are dead, but that is not true, that is far from true. Chapter 18 past confrontations. Unknown planet, around 7 pm. Issei was looking around, seeing if there was anything he could have done for the situation. He gave a frustrated sigh as he constantly sent and sows, hoping that some random Arcadian shuttle or anything passing by would locate them and help them up, but nothing. They were inside a nearby cave for shelter, it only took him a few minutes to locate a good cave, although, the best part was that he was able to walk only after a few minutes of using Diabolo's Dragon God. The last time he did that, the result was staying in the hospital for weeks so that he could recover. The worst part was that none of his true family could come to visit him due to some of them still being considered as criminals or either were not supposed to be alive. However they still came for him, much to his happiness. Juniper soon peeked out as she walked towards him. She still wore the same clothing, except which was partially torn at her abdomen area due to her injuries against the fight that had happened. She could see Issei getting frustrated as he exclaimed. Great, we are stranded here on this planet, with no signal. Issei spoke with a frustrated tone, he gritted his teeth remembering on how he was given the option, either save the weakened Empress or let the Black Arms led by Vlad Ark escape, what's worse is that she was powerless for a while, meaning that there was no way she could protect herself. 
Juniper walked towards him and spoke with an assuring tone. It is not your fault, Issei Juniper had kept her hand on Issei, she was helpless too, as Issei saw her expression and softened up a bit, as nodded, while clenching his fists, she then spoke with a smile, we will find a way out of here and get back to Arcadia to deal with the black arms. Juniper knew very well about a portion of Issei's past, when Vlad called out to Issei, as soon as he mentioned the names Dai Haidu and Serzich's Lucifer, Issei became beyond livid, demanding how did he know their names, although he did not receive his answer, they used this trick to bring Issei to their side, which did not work resulting in them using their nail on Juniper depowering her for a short while, forcing Issei to protect her and save her. Let's head inside, we will plan accordingly, and remaining in the sun won't do any good, Juniper spoke with an assuring tone as Issei nodded, in understanding, the duo headed inside in a nearby cave as they settled down for a while. Inside the cave, unknown planet, around 7pm. After a few moments, Juniper looked at Issei and asked, Hey Ice, may I ask you something? Issei looked at her as he was finding a way to find enough flammable substances, he looked at her and spoke, sure, I am all ears Juniper asked sadly, she knew what the two people were, as he hated them, but she wanted to know about him. Who is this Dai Haidu and Serzich's Lucifer? Issei became pale at this and went back to working, he did not want to remember more of his past, as he had gotten over it, in his eyes, they were dead to him, as he continued to work. Issei remained silent as Juniper spoke with an increasing concern, Ice, don't you trust me at this point, why are you hiding your past from me, you haven't even told anyone and even your family does not want to tell us, why can't you tell me anything? Why do you not want to talk about it, I want to forget Juniper Issei shouted with an increased anger, making the Empress flinch, as he soon responded, I am sorry for yelling, but I don't want to talk about the past that was the reason I ran away, I don't wish to talk about the past that ruined my life, but hiding it won't do you any good, you have already confronted your past at least once during your trials, so why are you hiding it again? You promise to face your past whenever the challenge presents you then why do you hide, why are you hurting yourself even more, Juniper retorted in response, as she looked at Issei with pleading eyes, Issei looked at her and spoke with a sigh. Fine, I will talk about it, since I made the promise, and I do trust you a lot Juniper nodded, a part of her felt guilty for forcing Issei to talk about his dark past like this, but she wanted him to be alright, she felt he deserved better, especially after he went out of his way to help her. Issei soon stretched his body as he managed to get some heating materials like dry leaves and dry wood, as he used some flame magic to burn the materials which caused a small campfire. He then spoke with a sigh. It all started when I was born, you see my family or more accurately the Haidu family were one of the most richest and successful families. However, underneath that facade, they were well known in the supernatural world, as well. They were a family of mages, Juniper nodded in understanding listening intently to what he said. She was familiar with a family like those in Arcadia as well. I was the oldest child of the Haidu family, and considered a black sheep of the family I was born a human, Juniper Juniper was surprised by this as she asked, this means Hades and his family aren't your real birth family? And you were not born as a dragon, Issei nodded as he spoke, yes, Juniper, they are not they adopted me, and I am more than happy to be with a family that loves me, than the one that does not and the dragon part, I will get to that later. Juniper nodded in understanding as she continued to listen to Issei's story, she had a bad feeling of what may happen, but she wanted to listen regardless to his story. Additionally, I was seen to be a disgrace because I never wielded proper magic, as I was ignored and neglected for most of my birth life till now, Issei continued his past, Dai Haidu is my younger brother, and he had proper magic, and he also had the Long Inus Crescent Circle Gauntlets, which housed the dragon Krom Kruich, the strongest evil dragon. He made my life miserable, making sure I never received a shred of happiness, he took away my friends and lovers from me, and even took the two I once loved, that being Ingvold Leviathan and Gabriel, the Seraph of the Heaven, and the most beautiful of them worse. My family or my sister did nothing to stop them, if there was anything my brother was, he was a master manipulator, he turned my loved ones against me, framing me for being a pervert, rapist and many more things to name a few, and actively went out of his way to make my life miserable, I never truly understood why, but he enjoyed making my life miserable. And as to how I became a dragon, it was because Dai stabbed me with a dagger coated with Samuel's poison, Juniper looked at him and asked. Samuel's poison? What is that? Issei looked at her and responded, Samuel's poison is basically a deadly poison for the dragons in our world, and this included a dragon-type sacred gear like the boosted gear I am not sure it would affect you or the dragons in Arcadia, but it would be wise to not take a risk. I see Juniper spoke with a worried tone, if the black arms got news about the Samuel's poison, then they would definitely use it against her, as she then asked, just how bad was it? I would rather get stabbed by a thousand blades that suffer Samuel's poison. Juniper gasped with horror as she kept her hands on her mouth with her speaking, was it that bad? The gas that the black arms made, yeah, I would rather die from that, at the very least my death would be quicker. Samuel's poison, yeah that does not do that. 
It will destroy your body bit by bit, you will puke out blood at every step, and the pain, god forbid if you have a high pain tolerance, nothing in the world will survive that. Juniper remained silent, she couldn't say anything after what Issei had gone through. But that was not the worst part, Dai kept doing this, he hated the fact that I had come back from life, he continued to make my life miserable, while taking away any and all happiness I could get, he made his life better, while leaving me to rot in the darkness he just did not want me to be happy, why? I was the disgrace of the Haidu family, I did not deserve any sort of happiness. Issei spoke sadly as he looked at her remembering more of his past. Juniper was silent, she now knew why Issei never truly talked about his past, she felt miserable for even asking about it, as he looked at her, he could see small tears forming in her eyes. Issei then continued while looking at her. As for Serzich's Lucifer, he was once known as Serzich's Gremory, the older brother of Rhea's Gremory Juniper became surprised by this, as Rhea's of her world did mention about her having an older sister. This could mean only one thing that there existed an alternate Rhea's in his world. Juniper then looked at Issei while controlling her tears and asked softly. Wait, Rias exists in your world. Issei nodded as he spoke, yes, I wasn't sure how to say this, but she does, and so does Roswis, and I am not sure if there are any other Arcadian versions of the characters that are present, but I just freeze up when I see anyone from my past. She now understood why he was nervous on working with them, or why does he either become nervous or freeze up when it is them. She listened intently as Issei continued. As for Serzich's, he did not stop Rias in any way, who actively also had a hand in making my life miserable, she is like the Rias of this world on the surface, but in reality, she is spoiled, callous and vindictive brat who only cares about her dream of being the champion of the raiding games, which were our world's version of tournaments. She bullied me on a daily basis, and with her help, which he was able to manipulate, he was able to get those that I loved to die's harem, which hated me for just existing, he actively went to make my life miserable Issei then continued as he spoke for Roswis. But Roswis, she ignored me and was easily manipulated by my brother, as she became a peerage member, she was even more aggressive and arrogant, and with die around, no matter where I went, my life was made miserable by my old family. That is why, why Nicholas called me a coward I guess I really am a coward someone who runs away from his own past. Issei heard droplets and looked to see Juniper sniffling, tears were falling from her eyes. I am so sorry I never knew you went through so much, it is no wonder you were so hesitant to tell about your past back when we first met, and why the others asked me to ask from you that brother of yours, die, he is as bad as Nicholas, no he may be worse, he used you for his own goals, and worse, no one loved you back home. You shouldn't be near that family of yours. Juniper cried onto Issei's shirt as he rubbed her back, she hugged him not caring that she was not his lover, yet. She cried not caring for anything. Issei never felt this amount of love and care, only his family showed this side towards him, he felt a bond between her, but how can this be? She is the empress, he couldn't love her, especially after what Nicholas did to her. Regardless, he rubbed her back, calming her down, as he spoke, it's alright, I am better than before, and I like this place, I have never felt better before, and it is all thanks to you, Juniper looked towards Issei, with teary eyes, as she knew this to be right. She knew how much better he had become, looking back at the boy that was looking for a place to settle down and live a normal life away from his old world, to now, who is living a much better life than before. You are one of the main reasons why my life is better than before, and I am not hated at all, instead loved for and cared for and looking back, I do see Nicholas to be like Di forgive me for mentioning his name, Juniper shook her head then spoke with a smile teeming with genuineness. No say, I should be thanking you, if it was not for you or many others, I would have been in a miserable state, and I will always be in your debt, Issei. Juniper spoke with a smile, she cared for the boy, but she was starting to feel a connection with Issei. She could relate, both have been betrayed, well she experienced betrayal from a lover just recently, his whole life was just filled with betrayal and misery. The bond that was present even before Nicholas's betrayal was going to strengthen in this place. Little does she know this bond will be the change her completely. They soon split up as Juniper speaks with a smile looking towards him and responding. Ice may I call you that, if it makes you feel better. Issei nodded as he spoke, sure, if it makes you feel better. Thanks all I am saying was that if you want to talk about your trauma, I will always be there for you, Ice. Juniper spoke with a smile, Issei could see that her expression was genuine, as she continued in a much sadder tone. And to what Nicholas said, you are no coward, you never will be a coward I know you are not ready to confront your past, but when the time comes, and whenever you are ready, I know you will manage to confront it cause, I believe in you, Issa Say looked at her with hope, as he spoke with a small red tint. Thanks Juniper Juniper could see herself in a compromising position, as she soon looked away, her also having a blush. She couldn't believe that she hugged Issei, as she soon turned away. Speaking of which mind if I ask you something, Juniper. Juniper looked at him and spoke, how was your time during your days in the military? I want to hear more of your stories. 
Juniper only gave a smile to him and spoke, I would love to tell you all about it to say. Juniper started to speak some of her stories about her day as a soldier, she also revealed on how much of a monster Willow was before she changed her ways. Issei was genuinely surprised by Willow being the person as Sephiroth, the monster that even surpassed her as well. Scene change. I'm skip brought to you by Chibi John desperately stopping Chibi Juniper from entering Chibi Issei's room while he is working in his office. The next day, cave, unknown planet, around 7 am. The campfire was already put out as the sun soon rose in the unknown planet with the sun rays falling onto a brown haired boy. He soon opened his eye to see Juniper nowhere around him, however he could soon see a weight on his shoulder. He looked around to see Juniper resting her head on his shoulder, he could see that she was lonely. Although she did not show it due to her being empress, she has been really lonely due to Nicholas's betrayal. Issei knew this and felt sad for her, he couldn't even imagine what she must be going through. He had to make her at least happy and much better than before, and he vowed to do so. But first, he had to find a way to survive if he had to get out of here. He had to look for a proper food and water source. If there is anything Issei was familiar with, it was survival. He made sure to move slowly such that Juniper does not get disturbed, he puts her head on the rock and leaves a small message behind such that Juniper does not get worried for him. Several minutes later Juniper wakes up, she soon looks to see Issei nowhere be found, worried that he must be ambushed by black arm soldiers, she looks to see a message that was written. I am heading out to get some food for us, wait for me and don't go anywhere ice. Juniper sighed in relief before smiling genuinely, she shakes her head, the least she could do is help him survive. Juniper still needed another day for her powers to recover to her fullest, the nail that Vlad had inserted was still there, and Issei managed to remove it yesterday, but her powers were still weak, and if not, it would take a little longer for it to recover for her to defend herself. Back with Issei, Issei was outside looking for food, wondering what is edible in this unknown planet, he hoped he could find some fruits and mushrooms, he had already picked up some edible food, using his dragon body, he was able to sense which ones are edible and which ones are not. Okay that should do the trick. Issei muttered to which, he carried a decent amount for the both to survive. Once he headed back, he could see Juniper prepare a rudimentary campfire and some stones to support a pot that would be used for food. Juniper turned her gaze towards Issei as she spoke with a smile, you're back. Yeah found some food, should last us for a day or two. Juniper nodded in understanding, knowing he was already gone, she then brought out a stone that awfully looked a bit like a plate. Here, place it down Juniper pointed to a slightly destroyed plate that she had brought, as Issei had nodded he did so, she grabbed a fruit and decided to consume it, with Issei following suit. This tastes good where did you find this? Juniper spoke with a tone of surprise, as Issei spoke. My dragon senses allow me to identify which is good and which isn't, and we have ample of this, should work for a day or two, Juniper nodded as Issei soon asked. Speaking of which, did anyone contact back? Juniper shook her head and spoke, none, none of that happened, it still is on, but no ship has even passed by the planet I think it is an unknown planet. A we will find a way out, speaking of which I was thinking. Juniper looked at Issei as he continued, while I was traversing, I found some ruins in this location should we head there. We can explore those ruins since there was nothing that we can do anyway, so we might as well explore it. Ruins. How can there be ruins in a place that has no recorded sentient life? Juniper asked surprisingly, as Issei responded with a shrug, don't know, the ruins may be our answer should we go. Sure, I don't mind Juniper spoke with a smile, as they finished their fruit and headed there. Scene change. Ruins, unknown planet, 12 pm. Issei and Juniper were walking inside the ruins. It was a dark and without Issei holding a flame stick, as they headed further inside. These ruins are longer than what I expected life even exist here. Juniper asked with a tone of surprise, as Issei responded, I guess so, this seemed to be a place of ruin for a reason, but why? Usually one of the main reason that happened this place was in ruins was because of either wars that destroyed the place, or disease or some other cataclysmic event even, I honestly don't know all we can do is move ahead. Yeah, I guess Issei spoke with a tone of agreement as he continued to push forward as they continued to walk ahead. They were surprised to see nothing but a ruined city, it was in complete ruin. Holy mother is that what was under this planet? Issei spoke with a tone full of surprise as Juniper responded. Yeah, I was not even aware of this this is the first time I am even seeing this place. Juniper mused ahead as they continued walking forward, looking around at the pillars and buildings of the location. This seemed to be a bustling underground city, but today, there was nothing but ruin, no recorded human life or sentient life was present. This place it feels so deserted so devoid Juniper muttered, trying to imagine the horrors that must have happened eons ago. Issei also wondered what in Am's name happened here. They kept walking forward until they saw an inscription written, it was written in some sort of an ancient language, with Issei asking, can you read this? 
No, this is a language even I am not familiar with try using analysis magic to try and read, Juniper responded as Issei nodded as he spoke, it is worth a shot. Issei brought out his magic, as he started to read the text, he was able to understand it as he read out loud. Those who can't confront their pasts are doomed to repeat it no matter how hard they prevent it, Issei looked at Juniper, who had an understanding of what might the quote be referring to, it was both of them in a way, but even more for Issei, he has been running away from his past, but he will keep suffering till he confronts it one day. Even Juniper can be technically related to this, she trusted the one of the four kingdoms, and this is what happened. She hated that she trusted someone like him and turned against him, but she had to not let her hatred get the better of her, otherwise she will not only get herself killed, but also that of her loved ones. However, before anything could happen, suddenly Issei felt a sudden pain in his head, and suddenly fell collapsed unconscious, as Juniper exclaimed, Issei. She tried shaking him, but he wouldn't wake up, out of fear of losing him, tears started to form in her eyes, she then muttered, Issei, please wake up. Remembering his sacred gear, she shouted, Drake, what is going on? He is alive but he is not waking up, as soon as he read the inscription, something caused him to collapse, and right now, he is reliving his past memories, Juniper became wide-eyed as she spoke with horror. No Juniper fell back, worried that Issei may not wake up, his past seemed like a never-ending nightmare in her eyes, as Dreg offered something to her. I can take you inside his mindscape I hope Juniper cuts him off as she speaks, do it. Alright Juniper soon entered into the boosted gear, as she was inside his memory, this was another thing that Issei or by extension Dreg could do, they could let anyone inside the mindscape if they wanted to. Juniper soon collapsed, with her body being knocked out near Issei. Once inside, Juniper looked at a dragon with the appearance of a large red western dragon, with a long neck and green eyes. He also has red and golden spikes throughout his body. Wait, Drake is that you? Drake responded with a smile, indeed it is me, Juniper. I see Juniper noted at the majestic red dragon, remembering her own draconic form, but she couldn't transform due to Vlad's curse. She looked around to see a small yet petite black-haired woman being completely damaged, alongside, someone whom she recognized to be a say. Is that... Juniper asked to which Drake explained. That is Nyx, or more accurately the form that Nyx had taken before she came to Arcadia, Juniper nodded as she asked, this is a past memory that we are viewing, right Drake? Indeed, Juniper Juniper looked at Issei as she asked, so what are we viewing? The day Juniper, the day that broke Issei. Drake spoke sadly as Juniper became horrified by this, she kept her hands on her mouth, Drake then continued, the worst part is that, no one was there to help him, even I failed to do anything for him I couldn't help him in his darkest hour. Why? Why couldn't you? Juniper asked with horror, as Drake responded, because he refused to listen to anyone, he cut off contact with everyone for a while, including me, he has been pushing away his past and running away from it. I see Juniper spoke sadly as she couldn't help but be saddened by what he is going through. She watched as Dai manipulated the scenes, and with Rhea's help, he was able to turn Ingvald against her. Ingvald easily fell for Dai's charms, with the help of some people Juniper recognized that were in Arcadia, she knew these were variants of them that existed in Issei's old world as well. She knew Roswis and Rias of her world won't do such a thing in their life. They also saw Nyx being taken away back to prison for her crimes. Juniper clenched her fists in anger, seeing that Dai was no better than Nicholas, if not worse than him, and she could see herself in Ingvald's place, manipulated and toyed with by that bastard's place. She despised that and will not let it repeat no matter what happens. However, she was snapped out of it when she heard a noise. Slap. Juniper and Drake looked at the one who did it, Drake had a look of anger and sadness, while Juniper had a look of horror, recognizing the one who did it, this was Ingvald Leviathan. Juniper was silent, she was beyond furious at how Dai manipulated everyone that Issei may have cared for against him. No wonder he was so afraid of loving someone, no wonder he was so reluctant on divulging his past ever again. I should have known, you are just a liar and a pervert that wanted me for my body I was right about you, he is my knight in shining armor, well you are taking all the glory you are a disgrace, and you will always be that Ingvald spoke with utter spite and disdain, as Issei had tears falling from his eyes, some wounds are even more damaging than others, he failed to see Ingvald go away, and his brother soon walked towards him and spoke. This is something you will never enjoy I spoke manically as he wanted to break his older brother even further. Drake was emitting with rage, while Juniper was seething, she wanted to console Issei, tell him that she is there for him, she tried to walk forward. However Drake stopped her, as he shook his head, she could sense his anger, as he spoke. This is a memory, Juniper you can't interact with it, she looked at Issei helplessly, as she could see why Issei now ran away. He truly loved her, and was broken, just like how she was when Nicholas abandoned her. Partner you must confront your past I think this place is wanting to show you where you were at your lowest drag thought as he wondered what his partner is going to do, is he going to cut him off like last time, or is something different going to happen? Juniper also had similar thoughts, hoping his nightmare could end. 
However, their thoughts were snapped when Dai felt a sharp pain in his chest. He coughed up blood as he looked in horror to see Issei stab him with a holy sword. Both Juniper and Drake recognized the sword to be Excalibur. As Drake spoke, this is not what happens. Next. What do you mean? Drake looked at Juniper who asked as he responded, he was broken after that and he did not speak to anyone for days. The only reason Hades and Persephone came to know is because Nyx told them this, you saw her having a look of sadness before being teleported right? Yeah I did Juniper spoke sadly, she was still in daze as to see Issei stab Dai with the Excalibur, she looked at Dai flinching back as his wounds seared in pain. The girls that loved Dai were in shock, how did Issei get a sword like that, with Rhea shouting. Iria's rushed to die, as Issei spoke coldly and with utter disdain. I am done, being nice to you, brother. Issei spat as Rias and the girls were livid at what the Haidu disgrace had done, as Rias shouted with pure anger and spite. You bastard don't you have any shame for what you have done Issei shook his head as he spoke. Yes, Rias were Emery, I have shame, but I have shame for not putting this bastard in his place, like I should have done a long time ago, Issei spoke coldly, as the girls were ready to attack Issei, including Ingvold, however before they could even react, several magic circles came right in front of them, as Issei used his free hand to snap his fingers. The magic that came outside was that of a very strong holy magic that made all the devils, yaokai and even half-devils scream in pain. That is holy light annihilation, Juniper muttered knowing the strongest holy light elemental magic he used against the devils, she knew that holy light is lethal to any of the demon race in her kingdom. Soon the devils were battered and bruised, they were critically injured to the point of death, excluding Ingvold who had a look of fear in her face, like the others, she was also battered, but unlike them she was unconscious. He walked towards Dai who had a look of fear and horror as he spoke. I am done being under your thumb, and today is the day. This ends Issei used the blade and stabbed him in the private parts, making him scream in pain even more. Ingvold was on the verge of tears. While Juniper and Drake were stunned at Issei's anger and ferocity, they couldn't blame him. Additionally they only had contempt for Dai, who made Issei's life miserable. Juniper was internally cheering for Issei, to torment and even kill him, he deserved it after seeing what kind of a person he is. You may be my past eye, but Issei brings out his blade, lifted him up and raises his sword, to see his brother shaking in fear, he was crying endlessly, he then kicked him so hard that he was sent flying towards a wall resulting in a crack, he was knocked out, and he needed to be checked whether he was alive or not. His ribs were broken, along with several of his bones, even his private parts were sizzling due to its holy element. You will not be my future, brother. Issei dispelled the holy sword as he looked towards Ingvold with disdain in his eyes as he spoke coldly, and to think, I loved you, pathetic. The vision soon started to crumble as Drag spoke, we need to get you out of here. Juniper nodded, she couldn't help but be proud of Issei confronting his own past, she would soon wake up back in the real world. Scene change. In the real world, Issei groaned as he was knocked unconscious by an unknown force, he did not understand what had happened to him, and now he was feeling something weird, he soon turned around to see Juniper also passed out. Juniper, wake up Issei shook Juniper, as she soon woke up groggily, she looked at Issei and spoke, Issei you. Juniper rubbed her head in pain, remembering on how she saw his worst memory, as Issei asked, you saw, didn't you? Juniper nodded as she looked down. Hey, hey, don't worry, it's all in the past I actually felt better, way better upon this thank you Juniper. Juniper was surprised by this as she soon smiled, while keeping her hand on Issei as she spoke. I am glad you are feeling better but if you wish to talk to me, you know what you need to do right. Issei nodded with a smile, as the room suddenly started to shake, and an entrance opened up, with the two looking at each other. Juniper puts her hand down, and speaks, what is that? Issei looked at it and responded, I honestly don't know, but we can only find out by going inside the entrance to the ruins also closed down, much to their surprise as Juniper responded, I guess we have to head there. Juniper had a bad feeling but nodded, they had come too far, but they couldn't back down from it now. They soon walked forward into the entrance, as the entrance suddenly closed down yet again. Suddenly the lights were coming on, catching the two off guard, as a giant automaton was right in front of them. It seemed to be a monster that had sort of a flame emitting inside of it. It had goldenish armor with two eye-like things coming from it. It was ready to attack the duo. You know what this thing is Issei exclaimed as he brought his boosted gear as Juniper responded, I have no clue, if I did, I would have known what to do. The automaton charges straight at the two, with them evading the strike, as Issei shouts. Balance breaker beyond. Welsh dragon balance breaker. Full power. Issei transformed into his balance breaker and was emanating his aura towards the beast, Juniper brought out executioner, as they both were forced to fight against the automaton that is acting as their enemy to escape. Issei immediately responded with two dragon shots as it staggered, but only for a moment. It soon generated a beam blast causing the two to dodge it. Juniper fired her shots towards the automaton only grazing it, as it soon fired a mortal of magical blasts at both Issei and Juniper, with them narrowly evading the strikes. 
Issei also brought his two twin revolvers judgment of Shamash as he fired some lava shots at it, which the automaton evaded with ease. Soon two cannons came outside as Issei shouted. Crimson blast the blasts were fired at the automaton as it took a directed, Juniper also pressed forward firing some more shots before reloading her gun, she had a few extra bullets. The automaton was damaged however it was not enough to be put out of commission. It soon fired a barrage of beams as Issei used a magic circle to protect himself while Juniper evaded most of the shots, but due to her weakened state, she struggled to help herself. Juniper struggled to keep up, due to the cursed nail, she was unable to move as fluently as she would normally, she took several hits as she got grazed under several locations. Gritting her teeth in pain, she immediately fired some more shots before. Click click. Oh but Juniper exclaimed with horror, she had to run out of bullets at the wrong time. She looked to see the automaton firing a very strong energy blast at Juniper as she looked in fear. But before she could, someone got in the way. She looked to see Issei protecting her with a magic circle as he spoke, move out of the way. Juniper was about to do so when the magic circle got destroyed and hit Issei. I Issei screamed in pain with Juniper watching in horror, Issei. Juniper shouted in horror as the energy blast stopped, the automaton had to recover for a while since it used up a lot of energy. Issei's armor had collapsed, resulting in his battered state. Juniper rushed to him with tears in her eyes. Issei come on wake up Juniper could see him unconscious as Drag spoke in response, he needs medical help, Juniper he is barely alive, I am trying my best to heal him up. Juniper gritted her teeth in helplessness, why did she let the nail hit her? Why was she so weak when those that she cared for needed her the most? Due to her weakness, Issei had to sacrifice himself to make sure she was alright. She took the judgment of Shamash that was dropped and looked at the automaton that was ready for the attack. She took one last look at Issei and spoke, this time, I will save you. Juniper rushed holding the twin revolvers in her hands. She decided to get the automaton's attention as it started to fire at her. She was able to get its attention away from Issei, who was slowly being healed by Drag. Take this, you damned monster Juniper shouted as she fired the judgment of Shamash at the automaton, causing it to be burned for a while. However, she couldn't keep this up forever. The automaton could easily take the attacks without any problems. It soon leaped onto Juniper and before she could react grabbed her and sent her flying. She managed to recover only for it to aim a beam blast at Juniper's legs, causing it to stagger. Juniper was on the ground. The automaton was ready to annihilate her from existence. She looked in horror as a tear fell from her eyes, she knew this was going to be her end. She gave one last look at Issei, while well, hoping that her kingdom can live on without her. She closes her eyes accepting her fate, the automaton fires a very strong beam at her, ready to destroy her out of existence, when... A bright light shines in front of her as she looks to see Issei raising his Excalibur in the air. Raising it high up in the air as a beam of blue energy shoots out to the sky. The Excalibur glowing in purple energy as twelve knights suddenly appear before him in a burst of blue energy, surrounding him in a circle, weapons at the ready. As Issei is now donning medieval armor and readies the Excalibur to battle. You will die Issei spoke with a growl, with Juniper looking in surprise and awe recognizing the being in front of her. No way Knights of the Round Juniper muttered hearing the myths about the icon that was never witnessed in thousands of years. She did not understand how can someone that did not have the Ark blood have this icon, she knew Issei was King Arthur in this icon. She walked to Issei while limping, who only turned to her. Are you alright? Issei asked to which Juniper spoke. I am but how can someone like you gain an icon? Issei himself was surprised as he spoke, I don't understand, this is an icon, I just raised Excalibur in the air out of instinct, and the next thing I know is that I am this Juniper herself was surprised as she soon explained. The one you are wielding is Knights of the Round, an icon that was once used by one of my ancestors, her expression soon turned to a smile, I never thought it'd be you that is worthy, you were destined to be something more, you were always destined to be something more. I I didn't know but I will use this new power for the benefit of Arcadia, no matter what may be, Juniper only smiled brightly in response as she spoke. I know, I Issei returned with a smile, however their moment was snapped out when the automaton roared garnering their attention as Issei spoke, shall I end this? You may, I Issei turned his gaze towards the automaton coldly as he soon teleported right in front of it and released a massive amount of aura pushing it behind, he soon placed the Excalibur which was a giant sword right now. Suddenly several crystals surrounded which started to explode in a bright light generating a barrier, the automaton kept charging at Issei, but every time it did, it fell back. Issei kept unleashing bursts of light magic at the automaton, making it unable to move, it tried to go after Juniper, but the light barrier behind was too strong. This went on for a while. Additionally during this, the twelve knights accompanying Issei also surrounded the automaton, making it unable to escape. They all had their weapons in the air. Once it was weakened, Issei removed out of his sword, as the he commanded. 
Ready, warriors, the knights roared generating a binding light magic which froze the automaton in place. An ancient magic circle came behind him as Issei shouted, witness, the ultimate end Issei, lunged a sword straight at the automaton, unleashing a bright beam of light towards Juniper, who couldn't help but close her eyes. The barrier shattered into pieces. The light soon died down, as the automaton was ripped to pieces, Juniper recognized the move, ultimate end, a skill powerful enough to decimate continents, he truly was worthy of the icon. You did it, Issei Juniper exclaimed with happiness as she rushed to Issei who was in still in his icon form. I guess I did it but how do I deactivate this? Thus do it, like you do with your boosted gear. Juniper responded with a smile, as the a huge blue light generated and Issei returned to normal, he looked at Juniper as a gate suddenly opened. How what the, now what? The lights of the door suddenly opened revealing a ship. Is that our prize? Juniper asked with a tone of surprise, as Issei fell to the ground, which made Juniper worried as he spoke, say, can we wait for a while, to rest using knights of the round did take a lot out of me. Juniper sighed in relief as she spoke, sure, ice we can rest for a while. Juniper also sat down, she herself had to recover the wound she had sustained during the fight against the automaton, but she was happy that they both will survive for another day and can finally find a way out. Chapter 19. Off the planet, ruins, unknown planet, around 3 p.m., Issei and Juniper walk towards the opening room, only to be greeted by what seems to be several tones of gold and other jewelry. The lights also displayed a space shuttle, which seemed to be red in color, almost akin to a dragon, it had a red hull, reddish silvery wings which had cockpit and two passenger rooms, a lift to connect them and some other storage locations. Is this some sort of treasure room? Juniper muttered to which Issei responded, I haven't a clue of this place. Juniper nodded, as she spoke looking at the ship, at least we found our way out. Issei nodded as he spoke, should we take all this gold and gems, I can store it in the boosted gear. Up to you. Juniper mused as she wondered how there can be a ship like this in a darkened location, where there is no life. Issei also saw something else as well, he saw another inscription as he spoke, Juniper, take a look. Juniper turned around and headed to the location. She also saw a huge inscription there as well. It had several words, as Issei looked at her and spoke. I will be reading this, Juniper nodded as Issei read it out aloud using analysis magic. Whoever possesses the power and strength to protect, to serve, to fight for the very essence and foundations of Arcadia. Shall be bestowed upon this power. When my time has come, I shall give this power to you. Whoever wields this shall bring glory, loyalty, to all of Arcadia and its people as a whole Juniper became wide-eyed upon hearing this, as she remembered the person that said this, this was an Arcadian. But not just any Arcadian, it was the first king of Arcadia. Richard Ark, or Richard the Lionheart, he was originally known to be. But how can this be? How can he of all people come to this planet? Don't tell me he was the one who designed the civilization if, so what happened Juniper muttered to herself, something that was noticed by Issei, as he asked, Juniper, you know this? Juniper looked at Issei and nodded, indeed, I do the person that wrote this was, Richard Ark, so this is it, we get out and head back huh? Issei spoke as Juniper spoke, yeah. His name is Richard Ark, formerly known as Richard the Lionheart. He was the very man who was the first emperor to unite all of Arcadia's races into one banner, a powerful warrior who wielded Excalibur, he was able to destroy armies with one slash, and was feared by his enemies. Issei noted, as he wondered just who this man was, she then continued. He was also the previous wielder of Knights of the Round, the icon you currently possess today, when he died eons ago, the icon disappeared, and nobody knew where it went we tried sensing for its power, usually it would get passed down to his descendant, but it did not nobody could ever find it hence, it was termed the lost icon, Issei nodded in understanding, as he asked, just how powerful is Richard? Juniper responded with a smile. He is a powerful warrior who wielded Excalibur, he was able to destroy armies with one slash, and was feared by his enemies. Richard could kill Salem and the brother gods with ease. His magic and power is tremendous. Issei nodded, wondering what kind of a man he really was. Juniper sensed this and spoke with a smile. We can talk about it later, first let's take up all this stuff and head out of here I will tell you more of his story, once we get out of here I mean, you have the icon, the knights of the round, making you worthy of another treasure, Issei looked at her and asked, what treasure? I will get to that later let's settle in the ship and see if it is working, Issei nodded as Juniper decided to speak something else as well, ice. Issei turned around as Juniper spoke you know, had it not been for you, I wouldn't have even survived the battle against Nicholas and Vlad, you risked your life to save me, despite my blind vengeance, and words can't describe on how thankful I am I will always be in debt for what you have done, no matter what happens. Juniper spoke while looking towards Issei which made the red dragon emperor blush as he responded, D thank you empress. Juniper smiled in response as she spoke, now, let's get out of here. Right Issei responded as the two headed inside Ragnarok, wondering what it is capable of, and what it can do. 
Juniper and Issa went inside the ship, the cockpit to be precise. No sooner did they enter, it powered up, they noticed it to be very advanced, comparable to the Arcadian technology they have today. Issa looked at her and asked, any name you think of for this ship? Richard called it Ragnarok in his diary I think we should call it that Juniper mused as Issa nodded the two, then sat on the console of the ship, as Juniper spoke. This is really something else Richard's ship is really powerful Juniper muttered to herself, as she piloted the ship, Issa wondered if he could learn how to pilot the ship in the near future. Juniper sensed this and spoke with a smile. Don't worry Ice, I will teach you how to pilot the ship in the future, Issa wondered how does she even know about what a person wants. But he nodded regardless, as he spoke. Right Juniper then spoke with a grin, let's get out of here. Juniper piloted the ship as a magic circle was generated at the top of the area, it teleported them right outside of the ruins. Soon enough, Juniper was ready to pilot the ship, as she soon flew off. Issa had already taken the fruits back in a portal dimension. Soon enough, they were outside the planet's atmosphere and back into space. Issei brought out a fruit and he passed one to Juniper, she soon placed the ship on autopilot, she happily accepted the fruit and started munching it much to her delight. Even she enjoyed the fruit that Issei had located and brought. I honestly am happy you brought the fruits with you these taste delicious Issei nodded in agreement as he spoke. I am glad you liked it, Juniper Juniper smiled in response as Issei soon asked, speaking of which, I wanted to ask, can you tell me more about Sir Richard? Juniper gave a smile as she spoke, I could tell you a lot, and even on how the civilization we were in, it once was helped by him, but the people turned their backs on him. They, like the EDF, saw Arcadia as a threat due to its rising power, and in the end he wiped them out. However in the final moments, the leaders of the war detonated a bomb that would wipe out an entire civilization. Guilt. Britain, he and his wife Aaka, the latter coming from that civilization, left behind a portion of the power in that location and, that power was then left behind, and after Richard's untimely demise, the rest of the power went with him. The Knights of the Round. Issei asked, earning a nod from the Empress of Arcadia. Indeed, Ice that was the reason we could never locate the icon until. Issei completed Juniper's statement, it manifested inside of me. Correct aside from that, Richard, like me, did not start as a prince or princess, Richard was an adventurer, taking his fleet to the stars, allying Arcadia with the species of the galaxy. The planet Issei and Juniper were on was a civilization in which Richard befriended, but were later betrayed by its people, seeing Arcadia as nothing more than a rising threat. So Richard used the power of the icon to make an example out of them, the aftermath led to a war that destroyed the civilization as we know. When those who led it, activated the temple that destroyed the kingdom entirely. Juniper spoke the last part sadly, paranoia against Arcadia was something she was all too familiar with. Many were killed because they feared and attacked Arcadia, only for it to be wiped out in response, she had a feeling that Nicholas must have done the same to gather those races that had held fear or grudge against Arcadia. She was looking down, she always hated war, but now, she had no other choice. Issei kept his hand on her, startling her as he spoke, are you alright? Why yes, I am fine, Juniper spoke with a smile as she continued while Issei kept his hand down, the civilization was called the Zenith Empire. A civilization at the peak of enlightenment and progress. Juniper spoke with a sad smile, as she continued, his wife, Aaka Ark was from that world as well, Richard befriended her in the civilization he visited and helped. There, the two fell in love, she was a renowned mage and was powerful, but not as powerful as the high class people. She was one of the numerous individuals that saw the dark side of civilization. So she helped Richard in defeating these conspirators, but ultimately accepted when her planet got destroyed. Knowing it was set to fall from the beginning. I see it must have been hard for her to know that her family perished in the war, Juniper nodded as she responded, it was hard, but knowing where the Zenith Empire was going, it was meant to be the end. It's a sheer shock of coincidence that we even ended up here, and the lost icon was found to be at the location. Yeah, and I even got over my past as well. Issei spoke while looking down, his past burden was going away, and soon it will be gone. He will no longer be shackled by his past, and that was the best part about it. Juniper smiled in happiness, the experience at the planet helped in getting over his past. She knew how much he suffered, but she vowed to never make him suffer again. She looked at Issei saying. Ice, know this, Arcadia won't treat you like what happened in your old world. Just, if you wish to talk to me, I will always be there for you. Issei looked at her for a moment with hope in his eyes as he soon smiled. I know Juniper, I know Juniper smiled as she soon remembered something else as well. Oh this reminds me, once we reach Arcadia, remind me about something I need to give you anyone who is worthy of the Icon of Steel, Knights of the Round can be given this Juniper spoke, while remembering a certain sword Issei can be given. Issei nodded in response, and she then continued. Speaking of Richard, he was the reason why Arcadians in general always held great distrust and even hatred towards the Four Kingdoms. Issei was surprised by this, as he asked, why did this happen? 
He wanted to help them, ice, but seeing how corrupt they were by backstabbing him and his allies. Those from the Four Kingdoms used him and only wanted his power and to rule his home and pillage his resources. He destroyed the armies of the Four Kingdoms and took off, writing a law for no one to step foot in the Four Kingdoms or accept anyone there. Thus creating the term, outsiders that is why we call most of those from that location to be outsiders, however there are cases, exceptional cases when said outsider is accepted here. Taken Rand and her family for instance, they were technically outsiders before they even came here, Juniper spoke with a smile, as Issei nodded in response, as he spoke, you are right, and did tell me she was once a part of the village Kroyuri, of the kingdom of Mistral, and I did hear about what Summer Rose did to one of her squads, due to playing the hero. Juniper nodded in response as she spoke, yes, you are right, Summer also belonged to the Four Kingdoms and decided to play the hero which caused John's squad to get killed. He won't forget their deaths, especially not one of his friends. Truth be told, with and in some others, I was more welcome to the people of the Four Kingdoms, more than many of my emperors before me. Despite many of my people hating this, over time they gradually became even more accepting of them. Even my own former husband was one of them. Juniper spoke the last part sadly, as she continued. The worst part is that, as to what Nicholas had done, this would affect my kingdom for generations to come, the deaths he had done, the despair to the families he has brought, including mine Juniper looks down, as Issei keeps his hand on her shoulder, I sometimes don't get it, why did he turn on the people that loved him? Yet, I don't think I will ever get my answer looking back, I always thought, like did I screw up in our marriage somewhere, even though my family loved him. But I always wondered, was he always like this, and I guess we both have screwed up love lives, Juniper spoke with a sad smile as Issei nodded in response, I guess you are right. If my brother wasn't there to screw my life, I would have settled down with Ingvald back in my home, there was another I loved. Juniper was surprised as she turned around to ask, who was that person? Her name was Gabriel, Seraph Gabriel she could read a person's heart if she wanted to. Juniper was surprised as Issei keeps his hand down, he did not want to hide his past from her, at least not anymore. She could read hearts how could she not see your brother's rotten heart? Issei shook his head and spoke with a sigh. He is a master manipulator, he was able to convince her that she did not need to do that at all, and she agreed with it but in reality, he only loved her because of her beautiful body. She was known to be the most beautiful woman in heaven, Juniper looked at Issei and asked, just how beautiful was she? And was she even more beautiful than me? Juniper thought, as she shook it pondering what kind of a person she was. Her beauty was regarded to be one of the highly regarded, almost on par with some of the most beautiful women as well. However, that was one of the reasons why many fell for her but not me. I fell because she was humble and polite, even towards me despite my reputation. However, in reality, she talked behind my back and mocked me thinking that I was nothing short of a pervert. She only did this because Dai manipulated her naive personality against me, knowing all too well that I would be devastated. In reality, she turned out like many others. Issei continued sadly as Juniper had a feeling that like many others she was toyed like many others in Issei's world. She wanted to tell him that she was there for him, but didn't feel right to do so. He may have recovered from his past, but he needs some time to work on his broken heart. At first, she did not think he would work it out so soon, but now she knows that it is only a matter of time before he will break free, and she will help him do it. And looking back, she was really naive as well, she hated the fact that she was so naive to fall for his charms and manipulations. But in a way, she would become more perceptive to not fall that easily, she had a feeling that Issei would also help her, like he was always doing, and she could have complete trust in him. The reason being, he could have easily taken her down to the island and escaped, but he did not do that, he made sure she was alright, she remained alive and well. He even came back with food and even almost died twice to make sure she was alright. She trusted him, and he did not abandon her, when she was at her lowest. Barely threw away a gem broke him, and he came to me and my kingdom to only restart a new life he had every damned reason to abandon them, and if I was in Issei's place, I would have taken revenge, burned them all to the ground but he did not chose that he really deserved someone worthy of love his love. Juniper thought knowing what kind of a person Issei really is, he is a loyal person, loving and proving until the very end. She hated them for abandoning him and especially die for making his life miserable. She vowed to make his life better and even heal his heart. To say this Gabriel, she is a fool if she listened to die I seriously feel nothing but pity for those fools for being under a false deception for so long anyways, you have me, you have your family, they, no we, have helped you for a very long time, haven't we if you ever feel any problems, know this, you can tell it to me, and I will tell you any time, alright. Issei looked at her and nodded as he spoke. Yeah I guess you are right it's time I don't let my past define my future, no matter what happens and right now, Arcadia is my future, Issei declared as Juniper responded. Now that's how it should be done, now let's head back I wonder if we are even there, or not. 
Juniper checked the console as she knew she would have to talk to the Arcadian space station to know who she is. Well, we still have a few minutes Juniper turned towards Issei and spoke, want to pass some time with some stories of your world. Sure what do you want to know? Juniper spoke with a normal tone as she spoke, tell me, did you fight for something worth fighting for in your home world? I did there was someone that threatened to end all of existence in my old world this was before I even met Nyx or had a cursed encounter with Ingvold, Juniper nodded intently, listening to Issei as he continued. The name was the Beast of Apocalypse, also known as Trahixa. It had the appearance of a large beast with characteristics coming from different animals like a lion, a leopard, a bear, a dragon, to name a few. It has seven necks, seven heads, with ten horns, as well as seven long thick tails of different shapes. It also has four stout arms and two legs that are even thicker than its arms. Its main body is that of a primate leaning forward and is covered in black fur and what appears to be scales all over its body. Its size is well over several hundred meters, making it significantly larger than even Great Red. Juniper was surprised when she heard that such a thing existed in Issei's undiscovered world, which was soon going to be discovered. But unfortunately the black arms did first, and she feared the possibility of them working against Arcadia. It threatened all of us, and I had to protect my family, Persephone, Hades, Melano and Macaria. I managed to design a powerful seal, comparable to what the biblical god has performed. Knowing that no one will help me, I was forced to read many of the magicians in my world to see how a seal of such a magnitude could be performed, including Roswis who had information on the beast to do so. Juniper nodded in understanding, normally she would frown on someone doing this tactic, but they would never even try to help him in any way. It was the only way that he could achieve his progress. Not to mention, he also did this to protect his family. So did you succeed? Juniper asked a pretty obvious question as Issei responded, if I did not, I would not have even been here, none of us would have been here, Juniper nodded in understanding, knowing just how powerful Trahixa would have gotten if they had not dealt with the beast as soon as possible. I see and it was on par with Great Red and Office. Issei nodded as he spoke, yes, it was. But it was not unstoppable. If that is the case, who was the one that unsealed the beast to even begin this whole mess, Ice. I am not criticizing you or anything, I am just more curious, I wonder if this Trahixa is a threat to Arcadia or will be a threat in the future. Juniper spoke with concern, the Black Arms was one thing along with its allies, but she was worried if Trahixa were to join them. No, he was a man known as Issei was about to continue when the ship signal cuts him off as Juniper stops the autopilot and check where the signal is coming from, as she plays a familiar voice speaks through. Unidentified ship identify yourself, you are in Arcadian territory Juniper connected the number and spoke. Jean, it's me, Empress Juniper, we managed to find our way back home. Let everyone know that I am alright. Jean was surprised by this, as she spoke. Empress, we thought you were Goner Hades and Great Red, along with several other scouts, were working hard to locate you, but couldn't find you, some even gave up home, but I am glad you are back say is a say with you. Juniper responded with a smile. He is, he is alright, he is the reason even I am alive, and this ship was something we found on the planet we were stranded on we will head back soon, let the Arcadian scouts in this ship is Arcadian, so you need not worry, Jean responded with a much better tone. Happy that, we shall do as you ask Empress, it is good to have you back you too as say Jean cuts off the transmission as Juniper pilots the ship towards the hangar of the shuttle. She soon notices several deep space vanguard and Arcadian shock troopers, all expecting the Empress's return, along with Issei's as well. The ship stairs opened up revealing Issei and Juniper outside, aside from her military uniform, being in a bit of a bad shape, they were all alive and well. The Empress has returned one of the shock troopers responded. She was saved and protected by Issei Haidu another of the shock troopers cheered for the two, as a third one responded. Cheer for the May Deep Space Vanguard responded, as they all cheered for them. Hip, hooray all hail Empress Issei was heard amongst the crowd, as Issei was surprised, he was taken aback by how much Arcadia loves him. Juniper turned around and gave a genuine smile as she had spoken. See, you see it too, don't you? The people in Arcadia, they love you, they cherish you and they look up to you. You were always meant to be loved to say, those that don't or never valued you, don't deserve now see for yourself to say, the people loved you, initially you were respected and admired. But now, they love you to say, we love you. Issei was surprised for a moment before he spoke with a tear falling from his eye, soon changing into a smile. I guess you are right Issei soon waved back in response as the crowd cheered even more, as the two walked towards the center, they were greeted by Jean and a familiar primordial goddess of darkness, who rushed towards Issei with tears in her eyes. Issei Nick shouted as she embraced Issei, who returned the embrace in return, as he spoke, I told you, I won't go down like that and always will be there for you. Nix looked at him with tears in her eyes as she spoke, I thought you were a goner, Issei soon puts down Nix, who rubs her tears as she speaks, but deep down, I knew you would come back. 
yeah, we both managed to came back and I even got a ship of my own Nick soon looks to the side to see a brand new ship that didn't belong to the Arcadian technology, it seemed to be ancient, which even caught the attention of almost everyone. Even Jean pondered on what kind of a ship it is, although it did seem familiar to her. Anyways. Jean spoke while looking towards them and responded, it's good to have you back, Empress, and you too say you managed to make it out of the broken ship alive. Um, thanks Supreme General. Jean spoke while shaking her head as she spoke, call me, Jean, you have earned it, Issei. Thank you Jean, Jean smiled in response as she asked, but how did you even escape the planet, and how did you even come back here, with a ship never seen before? Oh Jean, do I have a story to tell you dot dot gather my family something wonderful has happened. Juniper spoke with a smile as Jean nodded in response, as they soon decided to reveal it to the rest of the Ark family. Scene change, Ark Medical Bay, 7 p.m. Jade was scanning her mother along with several of the scientists present to make sure if the nail is still under effect, but it is close to gone. She had reunited with the rest of her family, and they were ecstatic to have her come back, they were happy that she was not gone, especially Artemis and her children. She embraced all of them, happy that she was back. Additionally, the Ark children now hated their father who had almost killed their mother, having no sympathy left at all for him. Even Rosemary hated him, which was something many did not expect since she was the closest to her father, but it was inevitable that this happened. They knew that their father had to be dealt with along with any and all allies. Issei also had to deal with his own family who was ecstatic for his return, as Persephone refused to let him go for a very long time, until Hades and his sisters had to force her away so that he could breathe. Despite this, Issei knew that he had found his new family and wasn't going to lose them. They all had a group hug, as Issei returned their embrace as well, even Office and Great Red were also included. Back at the current day, Jade was done scanning as she spoke. Alright mom, you are done Juniper asked with concern, so what does the scan say, Jade? The nail's curse is still there, but it should be gone by tomorrow morning, your power should come back as soon as it does, so you will be fine, mom. Juniper nodded with a smile, as she spoke. I guess Juniper shook her head as she spoke, thanks Jade I think I should rest for a while. That would be for the best mom. Jade spoke in agreement, as the two watched with Issei recounting everything. The Ark Council and the other Arcs were surprised by the revelation as Juniper added her own words. It all happened in front of my eyes he is the new wielder of the Icon of Steel. The Ark Council was surprised by this revelation as Alsi spoke. I can sense his power too, he really is the Icon of Steel the same Icon not witnessed in eons was witnessed today. Alsi spoke with a tone of surprise, as Liam nodded in understanding. Never thought the day would come, the day when someone outside of the family, not having Ark blood, would be worthy of an Icon, you really are something Issei Liam used, however he was happy that the Knights of the Round was in the hands of someone worthy, someone deserving, like Issei. He trusted Issei at this point, who came back with his daughter alive. Even risking his life and almost being killed, he used a power that would have been almost fatal to him, and that day, he became worthy of the Icon. But before you think of returning it, no, we are not asking you to do that, the Icon has chosen you due to how you fiercely protected the Empress, even when giving your own life to do so, the power of the Knights of the Round, that is yours Issei Galath spoke with a genuine smile, as Artemis responded, you protected our Empress valiantly, and in response, we want to honor you for your service, despite not being into the army as well, Artemis spoke with a smile, as Issei responded, can we do it at a later date? I would really like some rest as well, Jean nodded in understanding as she responded. Very well, Issei, you can rest just let me know prior about your promotion. Alright. Issei nodded in response as he knew that the war is far from over, the black arms are still out there, and despite the Empress being safe, they are still present. Chapter 20. Rise of the General. Issei's Mindscape, 7.30 AM. Issei suddenly looked around, he was in his Mindscape, which was common for him, but he usually came on his own accord or Drag must have brought him here. He did not come here, which meant Dreg had brought him here. He also looked around, his mindscape now looked different. It now looked like a garden field which had a gazebo and a table and two chairs. Where am I? Dreg Dreg soon revealed himself, as the giant dragon spoke with a smile. I chose to decide it to change the mindscape a bit, you liked it? Issei nodded as he exclaimed in response. Like. I love it, Dreg Dreg grinned in response, as he exclaimed, thank you, partner. Although, someone wishes to meet you, partner Issei was surprised by this, as someone suddenly manifests himself in his mindscape, as he soon takes a seat on one of the chairs of the gazebo. Issei widened his eyes when he saw him, he seemed familiar to him. He was described to be a man appearing in his early twenties. He has golden blonde hair with several streaks of red hair. He wears a set of white knight armor and a crimson mantle, reminiscent of an old western aristocracy or royalty. His eyes were described as shining like a beast. Please have a seat my dear successor. The man spoke with a tone of gentleness, as Issei soon nodded in understanding sitting on a different chair, as he spoke, I am surprised you didn't recognize me, my successor. 
successor. Issei asked before he realized who could this man be, he had a feeling that the person in front of him was akin to someone from Arcadia, there was only one person that would say that to him, as the man soon spoke, so you figured it out, Issei. My name is Richard Ark, also known as Richard the Lionheart, it is finally nice to meet you Issei. Richard spoke with a smile, knowing full well what kind of a person Issei is, and happy knowing that the power he left behind is in good hands. You are Richard Ark, the previous wielder of the Knights of the Round. Richard responded with a shrug as he spoke, indeed to say, I was the previous wielder and the power chose you for a reason. It was because you protected someone while risking your life multiple times. Not to protect and defend Arcadia, but even your old world Richard spoke with a smile, as suddenly a bottle of Diet Coke and tea were given to Issei and Richard respectively, as Richard started to drink it, while Issei looked away and gave a sad smile. Yeah and look at how I was treated and I abandoned them dot dot to their fates. Richard took a sip and spoke, that is not what I meant to say, yes you did protect them and abandon them. Issei looked at him as Richard continued to speak, but you didn't change your ways. You did not think twice in protecting Arcadia, the home that gave you a new chance of living. You were there for my descendant when you needed her the most you know who I am talking about dot dot right. You knew. Richard only gave a smile and nodded, before his tone became serious, I have seen your memories, my successor, and I know everything especially about that bastard die I fear for a fact that he would have even managed to manipulate the Arcadians, and that he would go after the Arcadians as well in the future, you must protect Arcadia, so that any of my descendants don't fall under his hands you know deception, and while Juniper is still handling the weight of her betrayal, you must protect her and my family from him and those that follow him at all costs. So he wants to go after Arcadia as well. Richard shook his head in response as he spoke, I am saying that there is a chance that this may happen, thanks to that parasite of your ex-brother. They will be fooled into trying to get Arcadia to your side and go after and toy with the Empress, you aren't going to let that happen, aren't you, Issei? Issei clenched his fists at the thought of Dai toying with Juniper, he saw her broken look and was all too familiar with it. Her own husband or mate turned his back on her, enjoyed mocking her and broke her family. Just recently the family has started to accept that Nicholas wants to wipe them out, but it still is hurting them, they just bent out their emotions either in the war or they cry when nobody is looking at them. I won't let him get near Juniper, no matter what happens. Issei responded with a growl, before changing into a more sadder tone, I have seen how broken and lonely Juniper has been ever since the betrayal Nicholas has done to her. Her family was in tatters due to what he had done, his actions will have irreparable consequences throughout entirety of Arcadia, and with what is going on, they may hate the Four Kingdoms for years, if not centuries to come. Richard nodded in agreement as he spoke, you are right on that, Nicholas is from the worst of the Four Kingdoms, he embodies the worst traits from the Four Kingdoms like selfishness, deception, megalomania, vileness, arrogance and manipulative. We are kindred spirits Issei both tried to help others and have been stabbed in the back, Richard spoke sadly, as Issei took a sip of his Diet Coke and responded, how so? Richard looked at Issei and spoke, you tried to help the others, but they listened to a fraud and stabbed you in the back, well for me, mine were either power hungry like those from the Four Kingdoms, or they saw us as a threat which was the Zenith Empire I still feel the guilt of wiping out their civilization, many didn't deserve to die, but them following the corrupt parts of the Empire showed. Richard spoke sadly as Issei knew that he could relate to the former emperor of Arcadia. He was also treated badly by his former friends and family. Richard then continued. I could see the devastation in my lover Aoka's eyes, although she wouldn't blame or hate me for having a hand in destroying her home. She was still devastated for a while, and I did everything in my power to make sure she remains happy, till my dying breath, at the very least, we died of old age, and I was able to keep her happy. Issei understood how Richard felt, he was a man that cared for his wife till the very end and cherished her till the very end, he would have also done the same for his lover, someone in the future that is. He was a true king in his eyes, reuniting all the races in Arcadia and even creating alliances in the outer region. I see Richard soon took a deep breath and spoke, well it's all in the past, the reason I am even here is because I wanted to know, will you protect Arcadia until your last breath? Yes, I will, Richard Issei spoke without hesitation, as he continued, Arcadia is my true and real home, Richard, I am not going to leave it and would protect it till my last breath, no matter what happens, I won't stop till it's safe and sound. Issei's declaration made Richard smile with happiness as he spoke. I know that Richard spoke with a smile, knowing that despite being a non-arc, he still held the heart of one, and that was what mattered. However he could see himself starting to fade, as Drake warned him. Richard, your soul can't sustain yourself in the mortal realm, you won't be there for much longer, Richard nodded as he spoke to Issei, before the latter could respond. Issei, listen, there is something that belongs to me, and only you, the icon of steel can wield, it's the true Excalibur hidden in the vault. Issei was surprised by another Excalibur, or an Arcadian variant of the same as he asked, but how, I already have an Excalibur. What about the other? 
Richard shook his head and spoke before fading away from existence. You will figure something out, I trust you, and do expect some changes to happen as time passes goodbye, my successor, this will be our first and last meeting, use my power well, alright Richard soon faded out of existence, as Issei did not know what to say, he will follow Richard's last wishes and protect Arcadia at all costs. Partner you okay? Issei looked at Drag and responded, yeah I am, never thought that Richard would have a talk with me. It was because he left behind a part of his soul to his next successor, he has been waiting for eons to grant someone worthy the power of the icon, and finally reunite with his loved ones in the afterlife, but the day you and Juniper came into the unknown planet was the day he had hoped that he could entrust you with his power and move on into the afterlife. He wanted to spend the afterlife with his wife Aaka and his loved ones. You gave him the peace he always wanted, and now he can move on without any lingering regrets, Issei nodded in understanding to Drake's words as he spoke. Yeah I guess anyways, what now? Drake shook his head and spoke. It's time for you to wake up partner Issei nodded as he soon escaped his mindscape to wake up into the real world. Scene change. Issei's dorm, Arcadia, 9.30 am. Issei soon woke up as he groaned knowing he had overslept due to him being too tired. He then muttered, that was one hell of a reunion. I guess you are right on that Drake mused as he spoke, you don't want to keep Nyx waiting, she has been cooking since yesterday, she refuses to lose you ever again. Issei sighed as he soon decided to freshen up and head outside, where Nyx could be seen wearing an apron, as she brought out some bread, omelettes and a glass of juice. She soon turned around and gave Issei a smile. Morning, ice. Issei also responded in kind, morning, my dear primordial. So how was your rest, ice? Issei spoke with a sigh, as Nyx took a seat opposite to him and responded, it was quite amazing, I even met Richard Ark, one of the former emperors of Arcadia. The empress did inform me about him and how you got the Icon Knights of the Round, which still amazes me. You are the first non-Arc to have ever wielded an Icon in the history of Arcadia. That is really something to be proud of, Ice. Yep, and thanks to Juniper, I even managed to get over my past I mean, I had to face my past sometime so I confided in her, at first I thought she would see me as a coward for running away from my own past and world but she did not, she instead hugged me, consoled me, and told me that I was no coward. I did the right thing leaving them be, unlike Nicholas who saw me as a coward. She did not see me as a coward and even saw I to be as bad as Nicholas. I will forever be grateful to her, no matter what happened she was the reason, along with you and my adoptive family, that I will recover from my past and it will be gone permanently. Nyx nodded in understanding, remembering when Artemis and her children had given her the sad news that Issei and the Empress perished at the hands of the Black Arms, she and Mocha became devastated while Persephone was weeping endlessly. Melano, Ophis and Macaria were also crying when they heard the news at first. However Hades and Great Red refused to believe he was dead and worked tirelessly to search the both of them, he managed to convince the others that they are not dead, and they kept searching, which was finally stopped when Issei returned back to them, with the Empress alive, he risked his life multiple times to protect her. As a result, Jean was planning to reward him, but with what? That was something that they will figure out today. And after that look what happened. The Arcadians see you as a hero, protector of the Empress and Arcadia, and with the Knights of the Round being returned to Arcadia, you have become even more popular. Back there, you were hated and here, you are loved and cherished Hussein nodded to Nyx's words as he responded, yep speaking of which, how is your work with Galath going on? Nyx looked at him and spoke. He plans to build a deathless armor for me, he wants me to become part deathless as well, but he does not want to force it on me, he says it is my choice. Issei understood this as he spoke. Like what Galath said, it is your choice, you can become part deathless, if you want that is. Nyx looked at him and nodded, Galath did say that Nyx can be revived as many number of times, as long as her kips don't get destabilized, or if she is harmed by the infinity blade, she would be fine. Galath also did not want to take away her primordial goddess side, that is why he wanted to let Nyx make the choice. I see well he did say to not hurry and make my choice, Issei nodded in understanding as they soon decided to continue having their breakfast. They will be heading to Jean soon to wonder what she has planned for them. Scene change. Black Arms Base, Outlands, 12.30 am. Nicholas was furious upon hearing that the Empress had returned and had survived the whole ordeal, along with Issei Haidu. Even Vlad was livid at the fact that Juniper was still alive, the same woman which had ordered his exile along with the Ark Council. He wanted to at least get rid of the Empress to destroy their morale to some extent, but she survived. Curse that Dragon Emperor Nicholas shouted with fury in his voice, now he had to start all over again. He had been foiled in his plans, and it would have worked perfectly, he knew that the best way to exploit Juniper was to play with her emotions, it worked before and even now, but Issei had to ruin everything. What now? Your plan failed in a spectacular fashion. Vlad spoke with a mocking tone, however he couldn't help but be angry at Issei for ruining it, as he added, I hope you have something else planned or else we will be done for. 
Recently we have been taking losses in the True Sun's army, as well as the Outer Heaven, Arcadians have been starting to push back, and we need to have something up our sleeves, or it can be a problem, Nicholas nodded to Vlad's words, as he spoke. We will be changing our tactics, instead of going on the emotional warfare, which had worked until he foiled it, we will be using chemical warfare to our advantage, Nicholas spoke with a sigh, he was planning to save that a little bit later, as Vlad spoke. How so? Nicholas responded with a briefcase, revealing something that would interest him for a very long time. It showed a logo, a logo that had belonged to a company that worked with Arcadia, that his former daughter Jade had a hand in, a company she wanted to stop such that it won't repeat history. The Umbrella Corporation I am pretty sure Carmilla knows what she is doing right now let's see if you survive this, Arcadia Nicholas spoke with a dark grin, as he knew what was going to happen next. They will play their strategies differently from now on. Scene change. Jean's office, Arcadian Military School, 3 p.m. Jean was waiting for Issei and Nix to arrive, as she soon heard a knock at her door. She soon spoke, come in the door soon opened up to reveal Issei and Nix as she greeted the duo. Welcome, Issei, Nix Jean spoke with a smile, as she soon spoke, please take a seat. So what is this you are going to give us? Jean only gave a smile, as she responded, Empress Juniper informed me about some of the war in your world. Issei and Nix became concerned fret not, she wanted you to tell us when the time is right, and she plans to do it only if you give an approval. She also refused to share any more of your past because of that. Issei and Nix nodded in understanding, Jean remembered on how when she asked was Issei awarded Juniper refused to tell it, informing that Issei will disclose his past when he feels it to be right, as Issei spoke. I will tell the others once I am ready, Jean dot dot and I don't think now would be the right time to tell about it. Jean nodded in understanding as she responded, very well, anyways, this beast of Apocalypse Trahixa is something that concerned me, was it true you developed the seal to trap it so that it does not become a problem? Issei nodded as he spoke. Indeed, Jean, its regenerative capabilities and the fact it could divide itself caused massive damage and destruction across my world, many had fallen to its power, and it was close to being unstoppable, our only choice was to create a seal of that magnitude, such that it couldn't be broken. Jean took account into this, the beast could be one of the strongest threats they would face, Issei soon continued. The best describe its strength, it was on par with Office and Great Red, their clash could even end the world as we know it, and the worst part is its personality. It is a mindless beast that is only craving for destruction, so it cannot be reasoned with. Jean took this into account, she knew that Great Red and Office were one of the strongest of Arcadia's allies, and they could fight against even the big three as well, but like Issei said, sealing was also an option to minimize damage. I see I will see what I can do into it but that combined with what you have done coupled with what happened when you were stranded on that planet, I or more accurately the Arcadian Council, have decided to bestow you with the highest honor that the military has to offer. Stand up, young man. Issei did as she follows as she opened a desk and removed three stars from her desk. She soon comes closer and attaches it to his military uniform as she spoke. Issei Haidu, henceforth you will be known as a general in the Arcadian army be proud of yourself, young man yours is the third highest rank in the Arcadian army. Congratulations, young man. Issei and Nix were left dumbfounded by this as he responded, I can't, I haven't. Not a word young man, it's in your capability to make sure others survive, you defended the empress even when you risked your life, you could have easily accepted her choice of leaving her to her fate and escaping with Mercury and his family, but you chose not to, you are even willing to die to make sure she stays alive, and you even have the power to protect your team. That is the council wanted to make you a general Jean cuts Issei off with a smile, as Issei was still left confused. She then continued. We know it is huge responsibility for someone that never had a military experience until just recently, but you were able to handle yourself and make plans accordingly while protecting yours. That alone is capable of having a very high honor and I believe you will do something greater as well. Issei nodded with an understanding tone as he speaks. In that case, I will honor the Arcadian army and lead my legion to victory Supreme General. Jean sighed as she spoke. Didn't I tell you to call me Jean? Issei responded to her words, it was more of a formality, and it would be wise to call you that when I am in the army, Supreme General. I understand very well, but first I think you should finish your capstone presentation and get your graduation certificate in the Academy of Technology. Once you are done with that, you can start your position as a general, either you can recruit an army or an army will be given to you, for you to lead. For the recruitment process, there is no hurry, alright. Issei nodded as he spoke. Very well, I will be taking my leave Jean. Jean nodded as the duo soon left the room, leaving Jean alone, as she soon decided to get back to work, she had to know what Nicholas and his black arms were planning next, and had to act quickly. They were in war, and that alone made it clear that they had to defeat Nicholas and his spies. Scene change. Vault, Mountains, Arcadia, 4pm. Juniper walked towards the vault, alongside Issei and Nix, as she spoke, here we are. 
The vault looked like a massive circular door hidden deep in the mountains, Issei and Nyx looked in awe by this. Now the reason they were here was because of what happened in Issei's mindscape, Juniper was well informed and asked the duo to keep this a secret which they agreed without hesitation. Additionally, the Empress also congratulated Issei for his posting, as she spoke, I still can't believe that Richard left a portion of his soul behind to guide you before he moves on to the afterlife, Issei nodded as he responded, Drag also told me he couldn't move on till someone worthy takes on the icon, once I accepted the responsibility, he finally was able to move on and reunite with his loved ones. Juniper mutters while looking away, yeah, you are right turns to Issei anyways he did inform you about the Excalibur, right? Issei nodded as he spoke, yes, he did, but how can there be two Excaliburs? Juniper understood this, as on his earth, Excalibur also existed, she shook her head and spoke, you can consider the Excalibur here to be an Arcadian variant, just like Rias and Roswas, there is a massive difference between them. And the Excalibur here is very powerful, but none could wield it, only the Icon of Steel can do that. Juniper soon turned around and spoke with a smile. And that is you, Issei say nodded as he spoke, I see so what now? I will open this vault, that is where the sword has been kept. Juniper accessed the key and opened the vault, and soon enough, the trio went inside. There they were amazed by what they had witnessed, the vault almost looked like a treasure trove, as it had several locations, each location had either an artifact or something else that they wouldn't even know. It almost felt mystical. Welcome to the vault, Issei, Nyx Juniper declared while raising her hands, as the duo were enamored by what they had witnessed, as the Empress soon clapped to get their attention. This is a place where the most mythical artifacts and powers of Arcadia remain, and you see the two orbs that are at the top. Juniper pointed to the orbs towards right of the vault, as she speaks. That is the power of the brother gods, the light orb represents the god of light, while the other represents the god of darkness, my ancestors were the reason why those two bastards are dead. They were the reason why the four founders had such a miserable life, and they were the reason why the first humans and races of Arcadia were killed. They also made Ozma and Salem's life miserable as well, and are the reason why they are immortal or more accurately cursed. Issei nodded as he spoke. I learned about them in Magic Academy, and so did Nyx. The primordial goddess of darkness responded. Yep, so what is it to them? Juniper spoke with a deep breath, out of all the sisters, Apricity hated her parents a lot, so much so, she did not want to do anything with them. She often showed disdain towards her parents who had almost killed her and her sisters and left them for dead, they started to become stronger, and once magic was sensed those two came back and they fought a gruesome battle against the gods, which eventually resulted in their defeat and death. Only after that Arcadia came into existence Issei and Nyx nodded in understanding as Juniper spoke. Alright, enough talk, follow me, Juniper spoke as the trio headed to a location, she soon took out a sword, it was in a secured container, as Juniper used a magic seal to unlock the sword, as the container opened, as she turned around to see Issei and Nyx. It's yours even I can't wield it myself. Not only the icon of steel is the one worthy of wielding it. Issei walked forward and soon touched the blade, he was able to carry it without a problem. Juniper was only surprised for a moment before she soon smiled, knowing that the Excalibur was in the right hands. Partner, try bringing out your other blade. Issei nodded as he soon matched the blades together, a bright light soon enveloped the blades, as Juniper noticed what was going on, the Excaliburs had the same power, and Issei was matching their wavelengths, which meant that blades were being merged. Soon enough the two Excaliburs became one, as Issei twirled the Excalibur which was a single sword, making Nick surprised as she asked, what did you do? Issei looked at Nyx and responded, I merged the blades, they were similar power, and they became a singular entity, I could sense them being merged together, and as a result they became a singular blade. Issei is right, this was bound to happen, since the blades are familiar, and with that I think it would be for the best, with that I think we are done here let's head outside. The others nodded as they left the vault, Juniper once again resealed the vault, as Issei spoke. Yes that's it Nyx soon smiled in response as she spoke, you did it, I couldn't be any more proud of you, Ice. Yeah let's head back. Juniper soon teleported the three back to the kingdom. Once they're each there, Juniper speaks with a smile. Alright this is it, I wish you good luck for your graduation exam at the academy. Issei nodded with a smile, as he responded, thank you Juniper. Nick soon spoke with a smile, hey, Issei, we should head back to the dorm, maybe I can help you with some stuff in it. Issei responded with a grin. Sure that'd be amazing. Nyx nodded as the two headed towards outside, Juniper watched them head back to their dorms, as she thought with a smile, while watching them talk and have a good time together, she also could also see Issei laugh with joy after a very long time. It is so nice to see him so happy her smile changes to that of sadness, as she thought, I should be happy for him, seeing him truly happy after a very long time, then why does it hurt me? Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.